We go out like a flame in the lights Feel the heat from the fire inside We go out and take over the night Keep it burning We've come so far To be standing where we are It feels so close Like we're reaching for the stars
<sighs> Bring that down a bit. Uh, yeah, and most of you guys don't get to actually... This is how I spend most of my day, actually. With a fucking towel over my shoulder. This is my kitchen towels. Um, buy them by the, like, billion pack. But yeah, I, uh, that's... I am, I'm literally, like, used to that right there. Um... Glucose levels are a little low. Uh, I just got back in from being outside and fucking walking the neighborhood and show that. So I've got some watermelon over there. Uh, and I've got some juice right here off camera. So uh, Kai may take a little snack break uh, here, in, here in a minute. Um, goddamn right. Always ready for an emergency. Um, uh, yeah, the intro has been there for... I don't know, eight months, maybe, something like that. Um, and the website's been there since before Twitch. Um, the website is, yeah, Kai's Things has been up for a while. Um, that's where all my stuff goes. Um, I need to get the brace off my, uh, I need to get the brace off my leg, off my ankle. It's a... A little tight, a little sore after the walk. I need to just air the ankle out. There. I'm balling for my walk. I'll be back yeah, in like 80 minutes. My profile will be like, all right, Duffy. <laughs> you do you, Duffy. Enjoy. Uh, yes, Scott. I, I, I felt like baiting some idiots tonight. Ugh. Even though I'm not really energetic, um, I still felt like doing it. Oh, and the sock comes off. Oh. Mm. All right. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I've just been low energy all day today. What day is today? Tuesday? Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Yeah, I've just been low energy today. Um, hey, Puka. Uh. <laughs> Amorous. Hey, Amorous. Um. No. How do we know that's the word of God? It's been translated like 170 fucking times. It's given to us by men. Men are fallible, right? How am I to trust that that is the word of God? And which God, by the way? Interesting. One particular sect of monotheists from the deserts of the Middle East. North Africa. Inspired by the mystery religions of Northern Africa and Egypt. Hmm. I think I'll continue to hold on to some of my doubt. And seeing as doubt is inherently human, um, that means it's divine. Seeing as I was created in God's image. Therefore, my critical thinking and my doubt is as divine as anything else. As belief, as faith. Therefore, if I have to stand before my creator in judgment, I feel that he will render me worthy as I've used the tools he gave me rather than neglected them and cast them aside, even if I had come to the wrong conclusions. But hey, who's got time for a nuanced argument with Christians, right? No, I find atheism just as goofy. I'm agnostic. The only acceptable answer. Because I'm human. In an unfathomable cosmos. I have no idea what this existence is. I don't know the base level of creation. I don't know what existence is about. I don't know what, it is, what the nature, true nature of it is. So for me to make declarative statements one way or the other is foolish 
a scientist doesn't declare himself correct or declare a, uh, a, a knowledge that hasn't been thoroughly tested, or at least a responsible and good one doesn't. Therefore, I'm agnostic. Oh, the fuck, you can't be agnostic, you're an ordained minister. It's a good grift, ain't it? Welcome to the church of how the fuck do you know? Yeah. Actually, that's probably a good church name. I wonder if I could get away with the fucking... Dude. We've been trying to think of a church name for a while. Hey, Astral. Church of how the fuck do you know? Or what the fuck do you know? <laughs> Church of what the fuck do you know? Um, is this? Oh, I'm looped in. There we go. Um, yeah. So exactly, Puka. I, I I hate to be the the simulation theory douche, but you don't even know if this is a simulation. You don't know what this is. You don't. You have no idea what the fuck this thing is. So. To make declarative statements one direction or another is foolish, in my opinion. <laughs> if you're insistent on doing it, do it. Go to the arena and have a fucking argument with Scott. That's what it's there for. It's for blood sport. It, you, 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 you make the claim to not want to do it, but you keep poking. And I told Scott, Scott approached me, like, Scott wasn't going to engage. Just do it. Just get it out of your system. It's, it's like fucking. It's like when two people just are, like, constantly flirting. Just fuck. Just fuck already. Just go into the arena on the Discord server and have it out. Just fucking, dude, Scott and I have fucking battled plenty. I've fucking taken cheap shots. He's fucking, dude, just do it. Just get it out of your system. Um, it's crazy. I think you need you Scott need to hop on air and argue for our entertainment, dude. I got fucking um, I got watermelon I can eat. If you and Scott want to get on the air, and as long as you maintain civility, I'm okay with it. It fucking give me a break to like eat some watermelon and have a good chuckle. Like I'm fine with it. I I just you know like this. Like I, I, I just think you're you're just you're circling the bed. Just just get in the bed and fuck already. <laughs> um. Well, I don't think you're gonna debate. Neither. I I think you're gonna argue. So that cl that that statement can stand. I don't think you're going to debate. I think you're going to argue. Um. So, feel free to argue with what you perceive to be a fascist. So, like I said, you guys can do it. I don't mind. I don't mind. I didn't have anything planned for tonight anyway. Like I said, I got watermelon to eat. I got juice to sip. I can fucking ref. That's just, it's up to Scott if he wants to um, do it. Yeah. Amorous. Yeah, basically. Basically, I, it's just, it's like, I don't, you know, whatever. Um, so the thing I want to talk about is the thing that's been making me chuckle all night long is that Lil Uzi Vert got his stupid fucking hood rich fucking diamond ripped off his dumbass dome. $24 million for a fucking overpriced piece of fucking carbon. Pink fucking diamond. This dumb motherfucker was paying off on layaway. And he gets it fuck. He goes fucking crowd surfing. And gets it fucking yanked right out of his dome like he's fucking vision. And fuck it. it the only, um... The only issue I have with this entire thing is that whoever ripped it off his fucking dome didn't make a get out get away with it. He, he, st this dumbass still has the diamond. That's the part that breaks my heart. I wanted whoever ripped that off his fucking dome to have just disappeared with it. Just poof. 24 million. Gone. 
But no. Yeah, no one saw that coming. Um, yeah, I, 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 that's all I wanted out of it was whoever fucking ripped it off his fucking skull to make make like get out of the fucking arena with it. Unfortunately, he's still in possession of it. Is it still being paid for fucking on layaway? Like, I thought he paid it off, Amaris. I thought he paid it off when he got, like, when he took possession. And, I mean, he paid $24 million. That thing's worth, what, maybe 100 k Like, he paid $24 million for it. I bet if he turned right around and walked back into the jeweler and said, I want to sell it back to the jeweler, be like, yeah, I'll pay 100 k for it. I bet that's the depreciation on that stupid rock. It, Amorous, he's dumb enough to not have it insured. He's dumb enough to not have it insured. This is a this is a motherfucker that is sincerely hood rich. Uh, Lil Uzi Vert, caboose, fucking dummy. Um, yeah, he's sincerely hood rich, paying off fucking like twenty four mil. A uh, pink diamond on layaway for like years so he can get it embedded in his fucking forehead like a doofus. He's dumb enough to not have it insured. I don't know if it is or not. I can't confirm that. But he's he is a rapist, Caboose. I, I as I understand it, he is a rapist. Um I, Amaris, I'm pretty sure he paid it off. I, because that was the news story. Like, he'd been paying on it for years now, and when he finally took possession, he had paid it off. And that that's, he paid it off, and he got to actually take possession of the diamond. Yeah. Like, I seem to remember that. So, yeah, I don't, it, it, I, ain't nobody gonna fucking loan him money to fucking buy a diamond to embed in his forehead. That, that ain't some shit I'm fucking underwriting. Right? Like, that's... Mm -mm. Yeah, he was paying it on layaway. Like, that that was the story. Like, for real, that was the story when it first happened. Was Lil... How many times do I have to say this motherfucker's name? Lil Uzi Vert. Just, just search Diamond in Forehead. And you'll find this motherfucker. <laughs> We're talking about somebody dumb enough to have a 24 mil Just search $24 million diamond and you'd find who the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> There's only one dumb motherfucker walking around with a $24 million diamond that he embedded in his forehead. Well, for a short period of time, because it got ripped the fuck out. Like a dumb motherfucker. It's just, it, it's just a shame. <laughs> He's a rapist. Um... It's just a shame that the person who ripped it out of his stupid fucking forehead didn't get away with it. Like, he didn't, he, they didn't, like, make off with the diamond. That's, that is, the, that is the part that breaks my heart. Truly. That, like, whoever yanked that out of his stupid dome fucking didn't just yoink. Right? Like, fucking go to the bathroom stall, pry the mounting hardware off of it, fucking drop that in a shot of vodka and down in one. Walk out. Yeah, they forgot to abscond with the loot. Um, yeah, I, 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 that, that, that would have been amazing. Oh. I mean, probably. It's a piercing. I mean, he's got, he's got like a subdermal um, for the mounting. And then fucking yoink. I mean, I'm sure it was, I'm sure it doesn't hurt that bad, but I'm sure it was unpleasant. Hey, thanks, Libra. Um, I, I, my plan was like, if, um, thanks for the fall. Um, my plan was like, you spent, you sit on it for a couple of years because you're not going to be able to fence that diamond. That diamond's too well known. 
Uh, it's a $24 million pink diamond, which is a rare diamond to start with, right? The cut is going to be, that's a known diamond. Um, my idea was you spend a couple of years learning how to uh, resurface and uh, cut stones on YouTube because there's tons of fucking like gemsmiths and shit on YouTube that publish like full blown beginner to expert tutorials. Get yourself some cutting gear, get yourself some grinding gear and practice on gems like worthless stones for a couple few years. And then when you feel you've got it under your belt, maybe cut it into two, refacet it and fence the two diamonds like just sell them uh, i'm like it, it, it's, it could be done in the modern area it would take some dedication but it could be done theoretically i mean versa i i've got the, i've got a mind that can come up with eventualities i was a project manager for fucks i was an independent IT, i was an it consultant on my own right for years and years and years like my brain is wired to come up with contingency plans like okay so how do i start with shit wiring and end up with world class network right like that's just how my brain works so you know if somebody handed me a hot diamond that the whole world knew how do i clean it um wither because we're dumb monkeys I mean, technically, we're primates. We're higher primates, but technically, we're dumb monkeys. Sh Ooh, shiny. As I said on Discord earlier, like, this dumb motherfucker could have... Oh, let's see. I could uplift my broken community or... Ooh, shiny. We're dumb monkeys. Human beings like to climb to the highest thing. They like the shiny thing. Ugh. That's just who we are. Uh, skeptic, yeah, I've actually had, um, a fucking shrink do it back in the day. Um, but that's, it's gauche to talk about your bank account and your IQ. It's fucking stupid. Um, yeah, that's not a thing I'm going to be doing, skeptic. Um, it's, it's just... It means nothing. The end of the day, it means nothing. Um. Oh, uh, what are my thoughts on Pan Africanism? It's fucking goofy as shit. It's like Pan Indianism, or Pan, uh, or uh, Pan Indigenous, um, uh, like Indigenous Americanism, or whatever the fuck they're calling their shit these days. It's a goofy idea. It's it's the same fucking problem that America has. Um. There's too many disparate cultures, societies, ethnic groups, ideologies, philosophies to be unified in a singular unit like that. Dunbar's number is getting the shit kicked out of it the entire time that you're talking about it. You just, you realize that at the end of the day, you're like, well, these people don't get along with these people. How are they, how am I supposed to treat them as a singular unit? These people's wants and needs are different and disparate from these people's wants and needs. How are we to address them as the same entity? It's a goofy idea. It's a goofy idea. Um... What's up, Kaz? Uh, Libra, you, you go to a shrink. You go to, you go to a psychologist, um, and they will do it. Because there's, there's actually, like, there's proper testing methodologies for doing it. And, like, online tests don't follow them. It, it's just not going to be accurate. A little bit, Kaz. A little bit. Um... It's, it's not worth doing. At the end of the day, it's not worth doing. Um, oh, let's see. How dare you imply Egyptian Ba'athists might not get along with North Nigerian Muslims and Bantu Christians? I know, right, Marcus? How dare I try and introduce some nuance into a conversation? Stupid, stupid, stupid Kai. Well, that's just because I'm a white guy. That's that's my uh, white European uh, ancestral privilege speaking. And clearly the uh, Europeans have never experienced any amount of infighting when tried to be treated as a macro unit. For sure. For sure. So I, I would know nothing about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
uh, modern contemporary uh, contemporary American uh, contemporary Americans have no concept of this idea either. For for sure, yeah. Um, Californians are the same people as um, like Texans. Yeah. So, you know, what do I know? Um, so we just. Is had an ADHD evaluation got confirmed with that diagnosis, but I haven't asked for an IQ test. I mean, it's it's rare that they do it. Uh, miss, Mr. A user uh, name, okay. Um, you work in IT too. Um, what do you do? Um, taking an IQ test equals lowering your IQ. First, that's I mean, it's kind of, I mean you know, it's not literally, but I mean, yeah. It was done to me as a as a youth, right? Like it was it wasn't something I pursued. So, um, so would you say that ideological impacts espoused by Patrice uh, Lumumba uh, wasn't instrumental in achieving full independence from the Belgian Empire? I think anti-colonial movements concerning Pan-African nationalism can be helpful, but also the opinion of nationalism can be anti-material at times. Okay, skeptic. Like, th I. This isn't my area of expertise. Um, I, I can't speak to P Patrice Amumba um, and his uh, any instrumentality that he he and his movement may have had in achieving independence from the Belgians. Um, so, yeah, I can't answer that question. What I can address is that um, if a grower has a mite infestation in their greenhouse and you burn the entire greenhouse down to get rid of the mite infestation instead of cleaning out the plants and disinfecting the inside and uh, maybe using an insecticide to get rid of the, the insects, the mite infestation, it's probably a bit overkill. Um, I think that using nationalism to fight colonialism probably ends up biting you in the ass in the end. Ah, okay. Now well, somebody's got to talk to the idiot users, so better you than me. Of course, I don't do it at all anymore. <laughs> Caboose. Um, the IQ is mostly just, it's, it's, intelligence is, it's what you can do with something, right? It's, it's your ability to use. It isn't your capacity. It, it's just how good are you, are you at using the hammer? But is your hammer fucking broken? Do, do you understand what a nail is? Are you even trying to hit the nail? Like, the, all of these factors come into play. So, yeah. At the end of the day, it's kind of bullshit. Um, Oh, hey, Amorous, you're Swiss, right? Um, do you see the Proton Mail shit? Not a good look. Oh, you didn't see that shit? Uh, Proton Mail turned over the IP logs uh, for a bunch of activists and got them arrested. Um, they handed over the IP logs to Paris in or, uh, a bunch of fucking activists occupied districts of uh, Place Saint Marthe uh, in Paris in order to fight against gentrification. Some 20 people were arrested, three searches were carried out, and several people uh, uh, sentenced uh, in uh, pro because Proton Mail handed over the IP logs and they deleted their fucking page that said, We don't log your IP. The, their section that was boasting about how we don't log your IP and all of that sort of shit, they deleted that from their website after they fucking handed over the IP addresses to the Parisian government. Yeah. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amorous, they were advertising that they don't. 
Um, yes. Um, I personally, <sighs> to what degree can I explain this on air without getting my ass in fucking weird attention? Okay. All right. You know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Um, okay. Okay, kids. Apparently we need to do this. Your own server is the best option, Square. Your, your own server is the best option, but it also opens you up to some other stuff. Most people can't run an email server. Um, if you, here is, here, is, here is the, okay. So I need somebody who is kind of boomer to join me on air. Who's comfortable being kind of boomer? I need somebody who is going to ask dumb questions. Um, that way, because I can get technical. I can, I can glad, I can just like glaze over things that is obvious to me. And so I need somebody who's comfortable being my, my boomer for, for this segment. Um, who's, who's going to volunteer? Um, don't make me choose you. Um, <clears throat> Where they're asking <laughs> Computer Um <laughs> Where they're Um Yeah Caboose you are You you Caboose doesn't fit the Fit the bill for this Um Caboose would Not ask the right questions Um So We're gonna do operational security For the activist so we're gonna do. Um, I oh you know what? I know who needs to. Um, you still there, Scott? Scott's boomer is shit when it comes to tech. He's boomer as shit. Good boy. What's up, you boomer fuck? Dude, god damn it. I was so hoping you wouldn't call me out. Yeah. I, I knew it. I thought I thought that other night when we were when I was talking about the exploit, I was like, wait a second. He fucking glazed over entirely. <laughs> like, I don't know anything about tech, alright? Okay, so ask the obvious questions as I go along. All the right. the stuff that you pops might be in your too mind. many questions. It's okay, it's okay. Um, so let's start with the obvious question that was asked. Uh, yeah, yeah. Scott's terrible at tech. Um, oh God, yeah, I'm so bad at tech. So here's the here's the here's the thing. First off, somebody asked. Uh, somebody stated. Square stated. It's running your own server. If you have to ask me how to get a secure email address. You are in no position to be setting up a secure email server. Okay. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. So that is, that's just ruled out of the gate. You are going to be reliant upon somebody else's service. That's just the way it's going to go. Um, so let me, let me get a couple of things lined up here and I am going to walk you through, um, two levels of sort of potential here. Um, I'll get a couple of fucking things lined up. All right. Cool. Now, <laughs> time to go back to Courier Pigeon. Uh, hey, sadly, um, Let's see. What's your? I mean, that's your first message. Um, oh wow! But you've been following for a while. Welcome back. Um, okay. So first out of the gate, um, I'm going to be partially reading from something I already have written that you guys can access. 
Um, it is on my, um, it got, it needs fucking like grammar and spell checked, but it is like early alpha. Uh, it's on my cheat sheet on my website. Um, so if you want to follow along for some of that, um, cs.kaisthings.com, cs.kaisthings.com. It'll be at the bottom under the technology section. It's a tab called operational security for the activist. Um, this is the basics. Um, I'm going to add on to that a little bit as we go along. Um, but I will also be reading it. So if you aren't already aware, you should be, but if you aren't already aware, your communications are subject to global surveillance. Straight up. Your, your communications are basically permeable. Um, there are a few instances in which there is what we call end-to-end -end encryption, meaning the device between, say, Scott and myself both use a shared key system to encrypt the communications from my side to him. He decrypts. He sends to me, he, he types a message, it encrypts, it sends to me, I decrypt, right? There, there are end-to-end -end encryption systems. There are problems with them. We're not going to get into um, to, uh, cryptography and some of the mathematical foibles that uh, are, are involved in algorithmic encryption, but um, what you need to know is that there are a dozen, dozen middlemen I understood the word foibles. Yes. Um, does, there are a dozen, <laughs> dozen middlemen sitting between you and anybody you're talking to. And all of them have the potential to, one, look at your, your, uh, your, tech, uh, look at your messages for themselves or be compelled by a government entity to do it on their behalf. Or in some instances, such as room four, uh, 641A in the AT&T San Francisco hub, um, the NSA has a direct fiber split from the trans-Pacific um, fiber run that goes up into the AT&T building. So they literally split the fiber and the NSA gets a direct copy of all the communications coming across it. So there's multiple layers or levels of surveillance that can be conducted on you at any given time. There also is targeted surveillance. Um, targeted surveillance, there are a couple of ways to mitigate. Um, I will mention one of them as this progresses. Um, but starting position, you need a good VPN. Baseline, you need a VPN. Okay, so what the fuck is a VPN, right? You've probably heard the term before, you're probably some IT geek, somebody like me. Uh, you've seen it advertised like on the back of like a Raid Shadow Legends fucking Nord VPN Linus ad or some shit like that, right? What the fuck is a VPN? Where can you get one? It stands for Virtual Private Network. It's basically a technology that extends a private network, say your home network across a public network, usually the internet, but it could be your university or your work network. And that enables users to send and receive data across shared or public networks as if their, uh, as if their uh, computing devices were directly connected to that private network. So it takes like your, your wife's computer and your computer talking to each other in the same house. Your wife's computer can go across the country and it is treated essentially the same as if you guys were still in the same house. So it, it eliminates a lot of that external interference by using multi -layer, multiple layers of encryption usually. It, it's, we're not gonna get into the technology of it, but tunneling and encryption is generally what you're gonna see talked about, okay? So you need a VPN. Um, applications will run across a VPN. These days, VPNs are very easy to configure. The, uh, the, the apps that um, the VPN providers use are fairly seamless. So there's not a whole lot of barrier to entry on this technology. Most people can, can run one. Encryption is common, but not an intrinsic or inherent part of a VPN. What is encryption? Encryption is just an, a method of obfuscating data. It's a way for you and I to have a shared common password basically, um, and not necessarily know each other's password. So, no, I got no boomer questions here so far. We're good for right now. Cool. But trust, trust. It, it, we'll get there. It will happen. Yes. Um, 
there are higher details in some of this that like if if somebody had technical questions we could get into pr uh, public and private key shared encryption and key rings and these sorts of things but we don't need to do that for the purposes of a opsec for activists uh discussion right um just saying that they're pretty easy like if you don't have a vpn get one it's not hard so you literally just click a button and then it'll fucking do it for you. And if you want to choose a place like DC or something. Well, uh, you, yeah. I will I will get you some recommendations um, coming up here shortly. Um, it, VPNs uh, can make uh, it can't make online encrypt. Uh, it can't make online connections completely anonymous. You have to know that they can increase security and privacy, but they cannot necessarily make your connection completely anonymous. This is, this is sort of the, the hang up here is where a lot of people can sort of get, we'll say backtraced um, as a result of this. Um, it has to do with sort of coordinating at multiple levels. And these are the sorts of things that is very difficult to do. And if you have a good VPN provider, then it becomes nigh impossible, but not every B VPN provider. I would 98% of VPN providers are not that great of a VPN provider. So what a VPN security model actually provides is confidentiality. So even the network traffic, if it's being sniffed or looked at, that's how people in IT talk about these sorts of things. You, sn you sniff data. Um, if the network traffic is being sniffed at a low level, an attacker would only see that encrypted tunnel data, right? This is, this is what you're, you're essentially doing. Um, so sender authentication is to prevent unauthorized users from accessing the VPN. So everybody in the VPN is supposed to be in the VPN as opposed to ne not necessarily your Wi-Fi network or that Starbucks network, right? Like anybody could just be there. A VPN is people who are supposed to be there and message integrity. Um, it, it, Many VPN technologies ensure message integrity. That way messages can't be tampered with in transit. There are man in the middle attacks that can alter data in transit. It's a very high end attack mo uh, mode, but again, we're dealing with people who have global surveillance technologies. So they're capable. Um, this is what VPNs mitigate. So in summary, VPNs, allow you to easily encrypt the stuff going from your computer to the internet and back from prying eyes. That's that's what a VPN actually does. Um, I will, okay, so uh, let me, uh, I would not go with Proton VPN. We will get to my recommendation. Um, um, okay, I will address Outcast. I will address your first fucking paragraph in a second. Uh, I will address the second one in a second. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, just guys, guys, stop getting ahead of yourselves. <laughs> just go along for the ride. Let turn off the internet ADD brain for a second. Um, so where it's going to burn. Yeah. <laughs> so where do you find a quality <laughs> VPN? Right, like that's, that's people are asking. All right. So there's two recommendations that I make rise up, rise up provides online communication tools for people and groups working on liberatory social change. Um, they're a project to create democratic alternatives and practice self-determination by, by controlling your own secure means of communication. They provide a uh, multitude of services at zero to little cost to activists and politically active people from email to chat servers to VPN services. Um, I can recommend them for their dedication to activists at essentially no cost. But what I can't do is recommend them based on their security being tested and tested hard. Rise Up has never been properly tested, in my opinion, and they often close their signups. Oh, shit, I should have started. Why you motherfuckers didn't tell me to record any of this? Um, didn't I tell some of y'all motherfuckers to tell me to start doing this shit yesterday? Somebody's failing their crowdsourcing jobs. Um, what are you talking about? Um, I'll have to fuck it. I'll have to, you know what? I'll fucking, mm, I'm, I'm never going to fucking trim it out. I'm just going to reference people to it. Um, so that leads me to, um, rise up is free. Yes. 
Um, rise up free. Uh, caboose. Hey, Kai, you should be recording this. Fuck you, Caboose. Um, yeah, y'all motherfuckers dropping the ball. Um, Yo, Dancing Bear 007. That is a sus fucking name. Uh, so that leads me to my second recommendation. My second remedi- er, recommendation is PIA. Um, y'all have heard me shell for PIA before. I would I would take their money, but I'd do it for free. Um, PIA is private internet access. Um, yeah, well, I'm not recording, Marcus, so there's no point in turning them off now. Um, PIA is private internet access. Um, that's how you find them, privateinternetaccess.com. Um, and they are the only VPN provider that has been properly tested, and not once, but twice. Um, how? By the FBI hauling their asses into federal court and literally coming up empty-handed both times. That's how. Um, PIA is... Um, That's only for, that's a vast misunderstanding of, of, uh, no, yeah, no. Um, I'm not even going to address it. That's so poorly understood. Um, <clears throat> basically, PIA is a favorite of pirates. It, the, the people sailing the high seas have been using PIA for quite some time. Um, they keep nothing. They have no associated records. They have no logs. They literally don't know what their customers are doing, and they have no way to know what their customers are doing, and that's by design. Um, The only drawback is that PIA is a commercial service. Um, But as I stated, their billing is completely separate from the other service they provide. Um, you don't get to use, choose usernames. They are assigned new, like alphanumerically. It's just a, a, a randomized assigned username and they can't really tell anybody other than you are a customer. And if you're feeling particularly paranoid, um, and remember it's not paranoia if they are out to get you, I suppose, um, PIA has non-traceable methods of payment including cryptocurrencies and up to and including sending them uh, purchased gift cards and prepaid cards. You can go down to CVS or Walgreens or Walmart and get a prepaid card and literally send them the number on the card and they will spin up an account based off of that. So you can use secure methods to access the website, which we will cover in a second, and anonymizing your connection and you can send them a cash paid fucking card number for a prepaid card that you go into a store with fucking a wig and like dress up dr- dresses the opposite you know uh gender or sex or however you wish to address this leftists fucking use the language you want to use for this um, but you can put on a fucking wig and sunglasses, your Jackie O's, uh, sunglasses and a fucking, uh, ball cap. And you can go into Walmart and buy a prepaid card and go completely incognito on this shit, pay cash, and you can get a PIA account. Um, and you can prepay it that way. Um, so there is literally no tra- uh, trail for payment. Um, so <clears throat> you've got a VPN. Now what? Well, remember before when I told you that a VPN can secure the stream of data, but it doesn't actually make you anonymous? Well, it's time to take care of that part. Next is TOR. Um, TOR is an acronym. It stands for the Onion Router or Onion Routing. It's a piece of open source uh, software. I I was about to say, you just answered the question with another question. The fuck is an onion router? Yeah, it's an open source piece of software, free as in free beer, meaning you actually get something for nothing. All right, that's 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 the open source sort of way of saying things. Like, is it free as in free beer? Yes, it's free as in free beer. You get something for nothing. Um, that it, it enables un- anonymous communication by directing internet traffic through a free worldwide volunteer network consisting of more than 7,000 relays in order to conceal your user location. 
from anyone conducting uh, network surveillance or traffic analysis. Now, they have some issues. You've crossed the boomer zone. Yes, exactly. Um, there, oh, are, yeah. there are some technical things that I'm not going to get into, but what you need to know is that sort of, okay, so there's these, how do I do it? Um, it basically makes it more difficult to track your internet activity. Um, this includes like visits to websites, online posts, instant message, and other communications forms, right? What it does for all intents and purposes is take your signal. We'll just call it a signal for the, for all intent, uh, for, for, uh, Lucas, we all do. See, this is the whole point of open source software. We all contribute. It's communism. Open source software is communism. It, it is. It is actually communism. Um, yeah. It is, it, it is the means of production owned by the public, controlled and operated by the public with no centralizing authority. It's, co it's proper communism. Um, so what it does is it takes your signal and basically wraps it and then hands it off and it's got a series of envelopes on it for all intents and purposes. And I hand it to the next person and they hand it to the second person and the second person hands it to the third person and the third person sends it on where it's supposed to go. All right? This is a gross oversimplification of a uh, onion routed TCP IP handshake. But for the intent, for all intents and purposes, for having a boomer level discussion, all you need to know is that it's basically a series of envelopes with addresses packaged in and you just hand it off to the next person and they, uh, they peel off a layer and that has an address for them and they hand it off to the next guy and the next guy peels off a layer and he goes, oh, okay. And he hands it off to where, uh, where it's supposed to go. He doesn't know where it actually came from. And the first person who it was handed to by you doesn't know where it's going. So there's these, this degree of anonymity that has been created using a digital set of technologies. Now, what you do with that is it, it, what it actually is, is a highly customized version of the Firefox browser that you use to browse the web with. So when you launch Tor, you will launch a Firefox browser and there will be just a connect button on it. You click connect and that's it. That's the level of interaction that you need to have with the, with, uh, with the Tor network, right? All right, boomer moment, boomer okay. moment. Boomer. How does one obtain this? You go to torproject.org. You go to this website right here at torproject.org. In chat, there you go. And this is, you know, I mean, these are details that you, you know, blocks, trackers, what is it, tra surveillance, fingerprinting. You don't really need to know this stuff. All you need to know um, that is that there are multiple methods of tracking you. And Tor does a good bit to defeat that. Um. Let's see if we can. There it is. This is what Tor browser will look like. It looks like any other browser. Tor is absolutely free. 100% of the way through, you will never pay for any portion of it in no way, shape, or form. And if anybody tries to make you pay for something involved with Tor, then you are getting ripped off and turn around and go the other way. Um, so that is how you obtain Tor. That is how you run Tor. Um, no, it is not. It actually is. I mean, it's right in the logo there, Caboose. That is literally the Tor logo. It has an onion in it. It, it is, yeah, the onion router. Um, so, you can use Tor plus a VPN. Your ISP 
can see you. We'll get, again, motherfucker, stop putting the card before the horse. You don't even know how to browse securely, so you don't know how to secure your computer session yet. Let me do this in an order that I know is the appropriate order. Um, you can use Tor plus a VPN. Now, what you have to understand about all of these technologies is that they add a layer of co connections between you and your intended destination. So duckduckgo.com or really heinous hentai porn.com, right? <clears throat> Every added hop that you include in that connection is going to slow down that connection and return. It is just an automatic byproduct. If my package to Scott has to go through the USPS, a third-party logistics handler, and then get rehanded off to some last-mile transit company, rather than just go to the post office, post office via USPS the entire way, it's going to take longer. That's just added sorting, added hands, added logistics, right? It's going to slow down that package reception. That's just how it's going to work. So you have to understand Tor is slower than your normal internet. VPNs are slower than your normal internet. Tor plus a VPN or VPN plus Tor is doubly slow. But would you prefer a slightly slower connection that may be five, seven, 10 seconds loading the page versus potentially somebody kicking in your door? This is your choice. So I think you can choose wisely on this one. Tor, Tor can be seen coming out of your internet connection. Right. Boomer moment. Okay. What's the danger of using Tor as like your regular internet browser for the normal shit you do that you're not worried about? Like, and then like the, the linkability of you not using a VPN during normal day to day shit versus if you were doing something like, I don't know, being a pirate and then cutting your VPN before that. Honestly, like, is there an added level of risk? Honestly, like not always using the VPN? Uh, yeah, uh, no, no. Actually, the, the added level of risk is basically okay, so Tor can be seen coming out of your, uh, from your ISP. So basically, a Tor connection can be seen. It, it, it's not that like they can see what you're doing. It's just that they can see that there is a Tor connection coming out of your house, right? A mm -hmm. VPN is common. Corporations use them, right? If you connect to United Healthcare's internal network as uh, as an employee, yeah. I mean, I've, I've used them as as I've used them. I mean, every corporate job yes gives you a fucking laptop and you have to connect to the vpn before you do anything same thing when i worked for the government so vpns are super common so what you can do is shield your tor connection in a vpn so you can bounce your vpn connection in town or like pia's got uh vegas destinations i can use one of the vegas sites so it doesn't go that far or you can bounce it over to fucking europe if you want um and that way, no one sees that you're using Tor. Is there a downside to switching on and off? Not really. Um, at this point in internet usage, most people have secured connections coming out of their houses to one extent or another. B be it HTTPS or VPN connections, it's a relatively common thing for encrypted tunneled communications to be coming out of somebody's house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know a ton of people that use VPNs. They don't do anything bad on the internet. They're just trying to watch a show on Netflix, and they yep. need their shit to be in London <clears throat> so that they can get the show that they want. Um, so, well, all of that, HTTPS, no script, um, all of that sort of stuff happens automatically under the Tor browser. So, like, again, this is redundant stuff for a lot of things. Um, so, if you are trying to be doubly secure you can utilize a VPN connection to tunnel into your Tor connection to Tor, and then you can use Tor to completely anonymize that route therein. You can also use Tor to access the dark web. We'll talk a little more about that in a second. 
So, just because you have a VPN and Tor both running doesn't mean you're not going to identify yourself. Um, you need good operational security measures in place. The first of that one is don't log in. At the very least, you need a burner account that was created within your VPN and Tor connection, and it is never, ever accessed, stored, saved anywhere outside of a secure realm. You do not log into your Gmail account over your VPN and Tor connection. You have just completely exposed your security measures by doing that. You've identified yourself. You logged into it with a clear net IP. They know who that is that set up that account. You logged into it with a VPN and Tor connection. They know who you are. It's that simple. You do not log in to anything. And if you do, that account better be a secured account created under VPN and Tor as well. Second, keep your fucking mouth shut. This is the, like, this is key to any operational security measures you will ever engage in. Keep your fucking mouth shut. If you're, if you're doing stuff that literally could bring the fucking, the entire French government to your doorstep as a political activist, yeah, keep that one to yourself. Right. If you're buying like, I don't give a shit. If you're buying a fucking cannabis cartridge on a, a dark web market, you're nobody. Don't worry. You're so, no one. So. If I already have a VPN, right. And I have forgotten before that I, my VPN was on and like logged onto YouTube, my VPN's already compromised. No, because that session cycles every time. So when okay. you disconnect, so the tour is the problem. It, it, the problem is is that you have accessed a a, a a thing that has identified with you, and everything that you do in that session then is exposed. So you can cycle okay, so, that. So session. it's fine if I'm like sit down, come home, and I have tour, and I go watch some YouTube. It's chill. But like, what do I like? How how long is this, every, like, every time like, every time you, session every time you there's literally buttons for some of the stuff like in Tor you can like burn a session, um but basically every time you disconnect your VPN and you disconnect Tor and then you reconnect a VPN and reconnect Tor that's going through an entirely new route. Okay, so the only thing I need to do to worry about this is if I was going to do something like I don't know communicate with someone or do something sus. Just make sure you exit out of your browser, go to the little taskbar, exit it all out, reopen it all up, and you're good to go? Yes. For the purposes of this scenario, yes. Assuming I'm not, like, trying to fucking, like, do something fucking wild where the strong arm of the government is coming for me as fast as possible. Yeah. And we're, we're going we're gonna to touch on a little bit of that sort of thing in, next. Um, Crystal, let's um, be honest. I'm just a propagandist, right? Like, I don't need to worry about my shit that much. Uh, the government has my retinal scans, right? Yeah. Like, I can't be doing wild shit like other people can. Uh, Crystal, even if I was smart about this, they are running a ton of relay points because the U.S. government actually uses Tor to anonymize communications for themselves when operating overseas. It, it, it one of the byproducts of that is that they have exit nodes that they can monitor and this is like we're gonna sort of okay so exit nodes are the the thing that goes back to the internet remember i said you know i hand a package off to guy a guy b guy c and then guy c fucking hands it out guy c is technically an exit node he he they are standing between tor and the actual interwebs right the government does run exit nodes because the government uses tor to anonymize their communications for agents overseas. One of the largest users of the Tor network is the United States government. It's highly effective. Um, one of the byproducts of that is, is that they can do a certain level of man in the middle stuff um, if they are so engaged to. 
the difference is, is that they don't run all of the exit nodes. They don't even run the majority of the exit nodes. They just run a few exit nodes. Also, there are mitigating ways to get around that, such as using a VPN and other things we'll talk about in a second. Wither, boomer question, what if you have a Google phone? Yeah, don't try and do any of this on that phone. Um, again, Outcast. Jesus fucking Christ. Outcast, I need you to stop getting ahead of everything. Right? Like, I will get to all of that. Every question you've asked, I get to eventually. Trust me, I've been doing this for fucking decades now. I'll get to it. Um... When using Tor, can you make new Twitter accounts and YouTube accounts and it be good or no? I would not do that. Twitter requires phone numbers these days. Do they not? Um, there are ways around that to an extent. Um, I don't know what it takes to spin up a Twitter account these days. Um, okay. So. Keep your mouth fucking shut. Don't log into anything that was created off the clear web that's already associated with you. Keep your VPN and Tor connection isolated. This will serve the majority of you well. Um, again, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. It's just, guys, your questions will be addressed. Most of the questions that you guys are coming up with, I already have plans to address. So just, like, sit back and go for the ride. Most of... That will... That will handle most of you. But as Scott said, and as I, I said, stated earlier with the, uh, the French activists that were outed by Proton Mail, occasionally people get up to things. Political activists some, sometimes have to engage in direct action. And while I neither support nor denounce these these events, whatever they may be, um, as a technologist and as somebody who is steeped in security and in cryptography, I am an advocate for securing the right, your right to privacy to, uh, for those communications. And knowing that, let's move into some other areas. Tails. There's, we're going to talk about tails. There is an alternative to Tails that we're not going to address today for the purposes of brevity. Um, but Tails. Tails is a project that is associated with Tor. It is a portable operating system that is designed from the ground up to secure your computer and of uh, and otherwise avoid surveillance. Now, there's a couple of key components that you first have to understand. When engaging in high-level encrypted communications, there are technologies that you are going to have to familiarize yourself with. PGP is one of the primary technologies. PGP is pretty good privacy. It is a public key it is a dual key ringed public private key encryption methodology. Basically what this means is that you create two keys. One of them is private. Never share this. It never gets shared. It is a secure thing. The other is a public key. You can share this to the world. I can hand it out on my website, and in fact, there is a public key accessible on my website. You can share the public key to every single person in the world. What it allows you to do, you can then, on the opposite side of this, I can import your public key into my key ring, and I can send you highly secured messages or files encrypted for you without ever knowing a shared password. You and I never have to establish actual secured communications to share a password. We do not need a shibboleth. You and I can exchange perfectly visible data with the entirety of the world and have secured two-way communications with each other. 
PGP is the can you, first. Can you explain that a little more? It has to do with some really complicated ma high level mathematics. And it's really not worth getting into. But basically, there is a way for you to encrypt things unidirectionally and have a way to decrypt it at the back end. There, the mathematicians of the world have figured out some very clever ways to do math. And that's basically what this is. Cryptography is math. And right, but what's it? What's I'm I'm I went more boomer than that. <laughs> okay, like what is the point of that? The point of it is like, what What are you actually doing? Like, and and how are you protecting yourself? Well, what you are actually doing is you are able to. Okay, so most secured communications, right? Think think spycraft, think tradecraft, right? You and I need to, you and I need a shared message, right? If I show up in the public square, you and I need a way to know each other exist. We need a way to know to handshake, right? Right. I'll be I'll I'll be sitting on a bench with a Rubik's cube. So how are you going to tell me that you're going to be sitting on the bench with a Rubik's cube? Well, I need some type of secured communication. Right. I, need, I need to be able to communicate that to you wouldn't without anybody it be, seeing. Wouldn't it be great if you could send me that message without me needing to know that message? See, that's the thing with a password is that you need to tell me I am going to be sitting on the bench with a Rubik's Cube. Mm -hmm. What if we could secure our communications and know each other exist and have that conversation without you telling me I'm going to be sitting on a bench with a Rubik's Cube. That's what a public key does. It's only useful in one direction. I can create an encrypted message for you without knowing how to decrypt the message. It's a unidirect. Uh, okay, so what you're saying is like if if I was to come later and try to decrypt, like if I was some third party and I wanted to decrypt the message that was sent to you, it's useless. It can't be done from from my end. It, it would have to be done from their their end. It is utterly useless. A public key cannot decrypt the message. It's impossible. Like mathematically impossible. It cannot be done. So I can secure a message for you without knowing how to decrypt that message. Whereas a password, you can work backwards. I'm like I'm literally like thinking about that scene from 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 Citizen Four, <laughs> where he yep. was saying like, even if I wanted to give you the stuff, I couldn't. Correct. It is, and it, it's because he sent the stuff out, and now like he can't decrypt the things he sent out. No, it's not possible. Once I secure that communication with a public key, I can't decrypt it. That's it. It's it's a unidirectional methodology of securing communications, and it is standard place in these ways. They are no Excel. Um, we're talking like span of the universe type unique here. You're not going to accidentally create a public key that would be shared with somebody else. No. Um, we're talking mathematical orders of magnitude here that are staggering. Uh, quantum mechanics already has uh, quantum, encrypted, uh, uh, quantum encryption. So even as quantum encryption enters the fray, some of the high-level encryption methodologies, such as RSA 4096... Um, would come down, but it was still, it's still out of the reach of like normal computing processing times. In the future, maybe some of these communications may become accessible and exposed, but for the time being, we're not too, security experts aren't too worried about it. And as, commu uh, as compu uh, quantum computing comes to enter the fray, the cryptographers are already creating quantum encryption methodologies that are even more incredibly secure to the point of if you observe the communication in transit, it alters the nature of the communication and so using quantum uh, quantum principles and is um, you can tell if somebody even looked at the message. 
quantum security and quantum encryption and uh, quantum communication methods, when they are fully implemented in the wild, will be incredibly secure. If the government even tries to sniff the message, you will know it. Yeah, it, it is quant quantum encryption, or like quantum computing, while people are like, oh, well, it may break encryption. It will usher in a new era of security and digital privacy, the likes of which governments are terrified of. I will tell you that right now. Yeah, I'm, I, I went full boomer and was just like, this conversation seems unimportant, so I'm not going to try is. and learn It is. This. It is completely ancillary to all of that. PG, <laughs> PG, PGP is necessary for these high-level communications. You are going to see it utilized in dark web marketplace so you're going to see it utilized in but you need a device how expensive are those devices and and what they is do, the they, risk they, of cost, those they cost nothing they are digital um oh, and they just saw the infographic and thought it was a fucking physical device no there there are keys that you could there are hardware versions of this sort of thing um All right. but no there what you need is generally just um open PGP or something of that nature. Um, there are pa PGP packages for Windows. There are multitudes of Windows, Linux, Unix, FreeBSD, um, Mac OS, um, and even the mobile platforms. There, I'm, I'm not entirely sure there's a platform in existence that PGP hasn't been ported to. Um, it is available on the command line. It is available in GUIs. It is available, I think, even in web interfaces. Um, but it is a necessary technology to familiarize yourself with. Um, I will, most of you are probably Windows users. Um, here is... Here is the open PGP website. They have a software section and they have windows. Um, if you want the GPG for win would be my recommendation if that you wanted to start off as a windows user, but they have windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Linux, browser plugins, webmail providers with those plugins, webmail providers with in-browser cryptography, um, this is a necessary technology. Um, <clears throat> once you understand that, um, is there a way to shuffle your current accounts? No, no, they're permanently compromised dancing. They're permanently compromised. Um, your clear web accounts, as you spun them up and access them on the clear web are permanently compromised. Do not touch them. Um, use, use them as you continue to use them, but in the no way, shape or form should secure communications and they ever meet. Um, so once you understand the concept of PGP, you don't have to understand mathematically, but once you understand how, how you do it, it basically is very simple. You create a new key ring. It will ask you for a name, a, an email. You don't have to put any of that in, but you can add identifying details like, you know, fucking burner account four is the email. But generally you do something innocuous if you are going to identify it. John M, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you create a fucking key ring. And that will generate a public and a private key. The private key is yours. Now, back to Tails. Tails is, as I said, a <clears throat> is a portable operating system. Oh yeah, this is what I was looking at. Okay, I'm sorry. So Tails runs off of traditionally a CD, DVD, or USB drive. The modern incarnation runs off a USB drive. What you do is you t you get a um, an image etcher of some sort. You can do this from command line. You can do this from a Windows GUI. But you download an image, and you put that image onto. And when I say image, I mean disk image, not a picture. Um, you, this piece of software will burn that image, put it in a file set on your USB stick. Is that like a .iso or something? It is, or a .img. Okay. Um. It will put that file system on that USB drive. 
and you um, you then boot your computer up to that USB drive rather than your hard drive. You can do this with a laptop if you really want to be crafty. And if you really, really, really want to be crafty, you can do it on a public facing computer somewhere that isn't associated with you whatsoever, as in another town or city in a library. You put that USB stick into a computer, you boot to the USB drive, and it will run Tails exclusively in the RAM. Now, what you have to understand about RAM is that when you turn that computer off, it goes bye-bye. This isn't like your hard drive. It isn't a permanent state memory. This is the function of Tails is it runs in memory only. It is, yes, it is volatile memory. Um, generally, you don't have to change the boot sequence. You just have to press something like F12 and select the boot device um, if it doesn't already auto boot to USB. Um, it runs exclusively in the memory of the computer. Tails. Okay, so this is this tails is likely only to work on because I know like a lot of OEMs won't allow you to go won't allow the device to um, to just like access like access a different drive right so like if you bought like let's say like I mean like like unless you like reinstalled Windows or something no right? most so most you, computers ought to, uh, will boot to a USB device. Okay. Most, um, especially modern computers, they're almost all designed to. It's because that's it, kind of what I was getting at. If the, if the BIOS isn't locked, right? Like, because that's what I was getting at. Is most, like a lot of OEMs won't let you access. Oh the no, BIOS. most uh, no, most OEMs do. Like, what they do is they do, um, uh, they do a a, a fucking uh, oh God. Uh, what's somebody help me out here? What's the, uh, U, a UEFI uh, versus um, what's the other one I'm looking for? Um, but either way, it's an installation type. It's not an actual lock on the, uh, the BIOS itself. It's the type of installation that they usually utilize. Um, no, it's not right. I'm looking for, um, give me one sec. Um, oh yeah. Okay. This is straight up BIOS. It's you, uh, it's legacy BIOS. That's what I was looking for. Um, it's UF, UEFI versus legacy BIOS. Um, and so basically a uh, legacy BIOS are easier to use um, than UEFI. Um, but for all intents and purposes, that, do, that will not interfere or get in your way of this process. Most modern computers are set up to be able to boot to a USB device because that's how most technicians actually install an operating system these days. So what would be, if you wanted to be super secure, how, what would what would you consider to be your level of protection if you just went to like a local tech shop that sells used bullshit, got an old cheap laptop, and only used this laptop for these things? Got a Tails device, set it up that way. Like, I mean, and then whenever you connected to the internet, you always use Tor and a VPN. Yes. Is that pretty much the way to do it, or would you still suggest if you were doing some wild shit to go if to like you were, a fucking library? If or some you were shit? doing okay, so you want to do if you want you want wild shit, like truly wild. I mean, I'm not gonna be doing wild. I, shit, I, I, I know. I'm just asking. But, okay, so like truly wild shit. Um, if it, it, it depends, do you have to do it regularly, or do you have to do it as a one-off? Because if you have mm. if you have to do it as a one-off there are some truly wild security measures that people have taken over the years. Um, okay. You would not want to purchase the equipment. You would want to social engineer your way into use of a computer in a township or city that you are not inherently from. You will have wanted to secure and cover your tracks for transit to there, potentially using a bus ticket that is purchased in a, um, a black market purchased um, identification that is forged. 
And once there, you social engineer your way into something, say, as a library situation. You boot to these secure drives. You use a uh, PGP encrypted communication system to transit a message over a, um, a, a Tor connection to some sort of um, darknet location um, that has already been pre-established. This is, this is like high-level tradecraft territory. Um, this is, holy shit, the Iranian, Iranian government may fucking track me down territory. Um, yeah, this is torture is potentially in my future if I get caught territory. Um, okay. there are, there are s sincerely secure methods. Um, if you are just engaging in your, your base level direct action activism, um, territory, then what you want to do is you ideally want a laptop that is purchased cash um, from some sort of shop locally. You want to pull the hard drive entirely. You don't want it to have any permanent storage in it whatsoever. You boot to a USB drive with Tails or Honix um, on it. Um, and uh, we're just going to stick to Tails because the other one's is fucking, it's a whole other thing. Um, you, you stick to Tails exclusively. Tails has a permanent section that you can store stuff to the USB that can be set up. So you can install a, uh, a, a, a subsequent piece of technology on it. Um, you can have your key ring on it. It's got PGP already installed on it. Um, so you, you create your key ring, you exchange your public keys with whoever you're going to be interacting with, and then you don't even need to use a darknet solution in that regard. What you do then is utilizing a public space of some sort, um, be it Starbucks, be it a library, whatever Wi-Fi you, your neighbors, like, I mean, I wouldn't do next, next door neighbors, but fuck, you know, like at this level, you can access like i can i can break into your wi-fi it's not that difficult right like um you gain access to somebody's wi-fi network in some regard and you use a vpn tunnel to connect to the tor network and you create an email account that is shared amongst yourselves in some way shape or form or individual accounts as long as you have the addresses ahead of time and you encrypt your, but shared accounts, here's, here's the fucking goofy thing. Shared accounts, sending an email, even between, even in the same email system is less secure than just creating drafts for your own email account. So, because yeah, that's what, that's what me and my stream partner do. We were using proton mail. We might need to talk about something else, but we were, we were communicating with each other via drafts and then just not actually sending the email. Yes. So you create those secure connections, you, you have the account, and you what you do is in your PGP... Yeah, I've done about 10% of the smart things. There you go. <laughs> uh, in, your P, in your PGP, in, in, in PGP, in Tails, there's literally an item, there's a clipboard in the top menu. You click it, and you can encrypt whatever's in the, um, in the clipboard or in a notepad. So you can use your partner's P, a public key and encrypt the message, and you just put that into the draft, and you save the draft. And then your partner pulls the fucking, does the exact same thing on the opposite side of the world or whatever. And you copy out the encrypted message and they decrypt it. And it's displayed in the RAM only version of Tails. And so they can then read said message. Now, there are a few things that were asked uh, along the way. Do, am I familiar with I2P? I2P is my preferred technology. Um, I believe this was Outcast that asked this a while back. I2P is my preferred technology, but the barrier to entry for usage of I2P for most people is un it's untenable. I2P is my ideal internet solution though. Whereas Tor is, it has exit nodes and has externalities to it that create uh, potential security flaws. I2P is a contained network. It's not designed to ever exit. Once you're in the I2P, you're in essentially what, what could be refer, referred to as an intranet, right? It's not designed to go outside of it. I2P has messaging, it has email, it has all sorts of things, right? Um, 
it is my preferred solution for a truly um, distributed internet technology for like next generation stuff. I, I would much prefer us to head down an I2P path. Um, but most people aren't ready for that. Tor also has, yes, Tor has the dot onion addresses. Tor is, that is part of the, what is called the dark web. I2P is inherently the dark web. I, uh, Tor dot onion addresses are dark web as well. Um, basically they are websites that exist only in the Tor network. They aren't on the clear web. They, they are solely run within the Tor network. Um, that is where you find your shady ass shit. That's where you find your counterfeit fucking goods, your IDs, your drugs, your fucking whatever. Um, I can tell you firsthand, um, the cost for right now, going cost. So I looked. Um, the going cost for a full checked US ID. Driver's license number, secu uh, social security number, credit checked identification, all associated address, and a credit card goes for $35. I can buy them by the batches of $25,000 if I wanted. Yeah. Your ID, your, your identity is worth $35. That's so what it's worth. So that's the sort of place that that's that's what happens in in around the dot onion territory um, is your dark web markets. You're telling me it only costs thirty five dollars to get some of these undocumented immigrants to start paying taxes. Basically. <laughs> um, yeah, I can get you I can use social security card for fucking basically nothing. I think they're like two, three dollars. Yeah. It's it's absolutely nothing. Republicans, let's gather around. <laughs> yes, monster, that is somebody else's. Let's stop trying to change laws and let's start getting these people some fucking social security numbers. Um, Give them real jobs. <laughs> Exol? No, I. No, I'm kidding. By the way, it, um, yeah, Exol. Um, aren't a lot of those bogus though? No. Um, I gotta tell you the. <sighs> This is this is gonna this is gonna make fucking Scott's heart heart fucking like grow three sizes basically. Um, the principles by which dark web markets operate could easily be described along lines of say libertarian capitalism. They are reputation driven, contract driven exchanges, and it works. If you're selling bunk IDs, you're not going to be around for long. It's the truth. Um, I'm going to need a couple minutes. I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It, it, it works. In that microcosm, it works. Wither, not at <clears throat> all. That's why it was a joke. Um, it, you can get all sorts of things. Um, it is a space in which legality doesn't really factor in. Um, it is solely determined by the ethical framework of those that participate. Um, no, not around for long, like their reputations will be ruined. Um, they won't, nobody will buy from them. Um, I, I, you know, most, most of those systems run reputation systems. Um, and they have dispute methodologies and they track how many disputes there have been with your account, how many you have won, how many you have lost. Um, yeah, they're, they're, it works. It works. When 7,300 people all give somebody five star fucking ratings and every single one of those is confirmed cryptographically. Like you can't, you can't fake that. You have to have purchased from these people. You have to have gone through this process because of the mathematic cryptographic process that's tied into it. Most of these places run PGP, uh, dual PGP encryption systems. Um, if you want to know 
Um, yeah, the Silk Road Guide was a fucking idiot. Um, if you want to know how these systems work, basically, you connect via Tor. You um, have to, one, know the correct address. The addresses are insane. The addresses are, this is not fucking Google.com. The addresses, I'm not kidding you, are this long. They're, they're absurd address schemes. You have to know the correct address. Once you get there, then you are free to create an account. You create the account and you, you upload a PGP public key. This, this key then allows for secure communications between the system, vendors, and yourself because they can now securely communicate with you. All vendors and admin staff have their own public keys so you can communicate with them. When you connect, when you find an item that you're wanting to purchase, which by the way, there's actually innocuous goods like non-illegal stuff sold in these spaces as well. A lot of these fuckers just ethically don't agree with the tax system and they're looking for means to subvert it. I'm not kidding you. A lot of the stuff that actually happens on those marketplaces is not necessarily like in, illegal in the way that you'd think it would be illegal. Damn it, I gotta go to the bathroom again. Yeah, they're, they're literally just <laughs> looking to bypass the tax system. Um... Porn accounts. You can buy porn accounts on there. It's 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 insane. <clears throat> um. So you create an account. You give it your your public PGP key, and you find an item that you're looking to purchase. Most of these systems use Monero these days. Um. Most of them use it, it's a it's a crypto coin uh, that is more secure and obfuscated for uh, transmission. Um, than standard Bitcoin is. You purchase the item. You get assigned a randomly created Monero wallet by the system. It spins up a brand new address for you, a new wallet every time. You transmit your secured coins over to that address. The system recognizes that the that payment had been received by transaction notices on the network it marks it as paid it waits for the seller to accept your pay uh, accept your order they mark it as uh they mark it as accepted and then the money is held in escrow until goods are marked as received on your side and if they're mark uh, if they're not received if you mark it as not received you can dispute the transaction and receive your money back and once you mark it as received, you're free to leave your reviews for the seller and the, re the seller is free to review, uh, leave reviews for you. This is how, how do you protect the exchange of money though? It's that's like, hand I understand the, the, I understand like the PGP is like not back traceable. That's, but is that's the, handled I mean, by Monero. Wallets are? That's, that's handled by the Monero system. Monero is, okay. uh, is an obfuscated coin. Um, so rather than the public transaction record that is Bitcoin, Monero has an obfuscated transaction record. Um, Gnome, in fact, yes, there are stuff. Yeah, there are there are viable uses such as that. Um, cheaper insulin and those sorts of things. Yes. Um, it is. There, so now you don't actually have to drive across the Canadian border to get here. To get your two thousand your two thousand uh, dollar EpiPen for three hundred dollars. Uh, correct, uh, Katie Cat. Just pay someone four hundred. <laughs> H HRT is a segment that is exchanged. Yeah, there there a good portion of the trans community does get their um, goods that way. From what I can tell, from my observations at a distance, yeah. It seems to be that there's at least a segment of the global trans community who does not have ready access to HRT um, that is operating in this modality. Yeah. Um, so, Tails, plus understanding how PGP works, Plus, having a viable VPN solution, such as v, uh, as um, PIA, paid via cash card, 
and understanding how to use the Tor network while also keeping your head down, not logging into various things that are already associated with your identity and knowing how to shut up about your actions on that network while you're doing it. You're nigh untraceable. You're nigh untraceable at that point. Mitre, what's up, man? So that, that basically concludes operational security for the activist. I, with that, you can keep your head down. What you do with that information, that's up to you. I, I don't openly condone any illegal activities, but I do believe firmly in the open sharing of education and information. And I do believe data privacy to be a right. So, yeah, I think it's important that we share these sorts of things. And to be perfectly honest, the barrier to entry has come down a long ways. In the last 10 years, it's it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier. Like it's it's I'm confident I could walk the most boomer fucker through it at this point. It, yeah, it doesn't seem that hard from what you described. No, it isn't. Once upon a time there was all sorts of configurations and files and you know, you had to understand parameters and things that were set. Now, download it and run it. Yeah. You have a do you have a link to the uh, to the in text tutorial? Yeah, it's uh, cs.kaisthings.com. Um, I don't have any of like the the tails sort of stuff. Um, like the the sort of like secured operating system sort of stuff isn't in there, but it's in chat. Uh, cs.kaisthings.com. That'll get you the sort of what is a VPN? Where do I find a quality VPN? So I've got a VPN. Now what? What is Tor? How to use Tor plus a VPN? And then how not to identify yourself. That's all in that portion of it. Um, Katie Cat, yes. Um, see, uh, see the open PGP website. Um, for examples of that, if you go to the software section on the openpgp.org that I posted here, I'll save it for you a lot easier. Uh, I'll put it in chat for you. Um, there will be a section for webmail provider with browser plugins and you will see, uh, you will see the Gmail one there. Um, so you can use Mailvelope, um, which will have a link there as well. Um, you can use uh, Mailvelope, which is a browser extension for Google Chrome and Firefox that integrates into something like Gmail. Um, that will allow you to use PGP uh, in your Gmail account. <clears throat> that will allow for secure communication, but not uh, anonymity. I'm not gonna lie, your website looks gross. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> this shit looks like something from the 90s. Are you on a web, uh, on a web page? Uh, are you on a cell phone or a browser? A browser. Oh, well, that should not, I mean, there's fucking even, I'd love to see a screenshot of you. Hold on, let me just share screen with you. Real oh, quick. you're on uh, you're on the cheat sheet, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Go to the, that's that's literally the cheat sheet. It's literally designed to be viewed on like a cell phone on the fly. Um, go to the, go to the actual website. Oh, okay. I just went and looked at. I just like clicked. The, oh, okay. All right. There you go. Yeah. All right. Like the cheat sheet is literally designed to be. It is a self-contained HTML file with all images. Jesus Christ! Embedded you need a into new it. Photo. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's on the to-do. Um, but yeah, the um, yeah, the 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 you can literally download the cheat sheet as a singular HTML file. All images will be embedded. Everything will automatically be there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that that is specifically designed to be that way.
Um, uh, what about actual email? What are some more secure versions if VPN Tor aren't readily an option? Uh, Hushmail. H-U-S-H-M-A-I-L dot com. Hushmail. They're hosted out of Canada, so they're subject to a lot of the same fucking bullshit, but they do have inbuilt encryption in between Hushmail accounts, and you can also automatically encrypt for an external view. Um, so I can send you an email, and if we've exchanged a password in advance, you can click the link and input the password and decrypt it. Um, so Hushmail. Yeah, would be my recommendation there. Um, weather. And I think they still do free accounts. Let me check. Maybe. I don't know. I've been with them for ages. It looks like maybe they aren't free anymore. For many, many, many years, they were free outright. Um, but yeah, um, the Hushmail will allow you encrypted forms, shit like that. So people can like send you, like you can literally build a, a form so people can send you encrypted messages um, without even having to email you. Ah. <sighs> Um, Eli, the computer guy said, there's no way to ensure privacy on the internet. Is that true? Eli, the computer guy is wrong. Um, it, it, there is, there is a way, there are ways to ensure privacy on the internet. It just, there's a techno, a technological barrier to entry. There's, there's a knowledge gap. Um, there's ways to do it though. Yeah, for sure. Um, but your average person is not going to be educated enough, uh, and prepared enough to do it. So as the internet stands, it needs modified. Like I said, like to, to, sec to securely communicate on the internet, you need a whole host of other technologies that you need to layer on. The internet in its standard clear net state with TCP IP, um, uh, you know, as the basis for it is no, it's not secured. It's not designed to be secured. We, we literally have to put layered technologies on it to secure it. Um, we, it needs a fundamental ground up redesign straight up. That's, that's what it requires. Um, I, whether it'll happen or not, we'll see. Um, All right. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> Katie, if you're using Wi-Fi, you're not secured. It's that simple. Um, Yeah. I can I can kick you off the internet um, by using your signal. Your 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 connection to your Wi-Fi router can give me enough information to cause a uh, to send a reset packet to your uh, t uh, and kick you off the uh, kick you off your router, giving me the opportunity to do a man in the middle and figure out your um, your key for your uh, for your Wi-Fi. Yeah, if you're using Wi-Fi, you're not secured. Um, and you're quite welcome, Scott. Um, yeah, like that's, that, that's, that's operational security for the activists. Like that's, if you're gonna, if you're gonna get your hands dirty kids, you need to have, know how to keep them clean. You should put them that way, put it that way. Um, wired, wired is always better than Wi-Fi. Ethernet cable, Ethernet cable. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Um, and thank you for serving as my boomer. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Are there are there any leftover boomer questions in your brain? I was trying to think about it. I mean, I took notes, to be honest with you. So I feel like I got it all. Um, I guess the only thing that I would ask is, like, is there a good place in terms of a tutorial in terms of, like, setting up tails when you purchase one? Right, because like not, you're just kind of like do not purchase, over, like never putting purchase. an image on it. You know what I mean? Like, is there a good sp like? Is this just a thing you could easily YouTube and they'll walk you through it? Yeah, um, the Tails website itself will walk you through it. Okay. All, because everything else seemed like I could kind of probably every, figure it out on my own. Everything order. outside of the VPN that I discussed today should never cost you a dime. The USB drive 
that that'll cost you money. But most people right. have one of those laying around. Every single thing we discussed outside of VPN service is free. Never pay anything. If somebody mentions money, you're fucking getting scammed. Well, except for maybe the even the VPN you said you could use like what was it, Raise or something? Rise up. Um, but they Rise Up does close. They 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 open acceptance for new accounts and they close acceptance for new accounts. So right. sometimes Rise Up isn't going to be available. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good on that. If you want to, if you want me to hop out, I will. Um. Yeah. Sure. Why not? I'll I'll fucking solo it it for a while since I'm I don't. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm fine either way. Um. I'm just chilling. Let's see. Does it matter where you get your tales from? Like if you download it on your home computer and then use it on an anonymous device? Uh, no, you're fine. You're fine in that regard. Uh, no, if you download tales to like your home computer and you burn it from your home computer and then you use tales on some sort of anonymized device, you're fine. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Uh, does ketchup belong on hot dogs? You do you, boo. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be eating the sugar and ketchup. Um, if I use my credit card to buy PIA, how compromised am I? Not at all dancing. They have, they do not associate payment systems with account systems. Um, so the, the, your data trail on PIA doesn't exist. They have no means to associate they, they can, they can tell the FBI, you have an account with us. They're like, this credit card has an account with us. Well, what has that credit card been doing? I don't know. Like, well, what has that account been doing? We don't know. Well, how many times have they accessed the service? We don't know. When did they access the service? We don't know. PIA has... I'm, just trying to, I'm, I'm thinking right now of like an absurdly swollen, large bodybuilder, like over top of a tiny little laptop with like glasses um, on, like setting this all up so that he can get his steroids. Security for the activists. Like, yeah, it, it's... <laughs> Um, I don't know if ultra surf is any good. Um, I would say it isn't, um, Rev. I, the only reason I recommend PIA is because PIA is the only single VPN that has been tested not once, but twice in federal court. The FBI has taken PIA to court and this is documented and they come up lacking both times. There's nothing to subpoena. They don't have anything. Like, you can subpoena the shit out of PIA. They don't have the logs. Their system is built in a way that they do not have access to any of that because it doesn't exist. So there's nothing for them to turn over for state's evidence. And unlike Switzerland, in the instance of Proton Mail, they're not required to. This nation, like I know, most most people are like, oh, you need a, you know, you need a VPN in Switzerland. No, Switzerland has d logs on the, they have laws on the books that require their technology companies to uh, cooperate with the federal government in those ways. The U.S. doesn't. They can't be compelled at this time is our in our current legal status to log what their users are doing. It's up to them to turn over any logs if they have them. But logging itself is not mandated. They don't have to. And if they don't have that data, then they have nothing to turn over when the subpoena comes. VPNs don't need to log IP by Swiss laws. Email does for six months. Oh, there you go. Um, I know that a lot of like video game companies that do private servers which is against like you know ip laws tend to do their stuff in the ukraine what, what do you i mean are there companies and stuff based in the ukraine because of those laws like i'm just curious i don't know but there may be um uh, i was just curious because I, I know that like 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 when before like vanilla world of warcraft came out right um on um by blizzard like a lot of people would play on private servers and you couldn't set those up in the US because even though they didn't have to like track stuff they you know they had IP laws but from what i understand the ukraine has like like you it's a, it's the wild west for the internet there as well i don't see anybody who's based in the ukraine but everybody has servers in the ukraine 
in Ukraine. Yeah. Um, everybody has servers there. But n nobody seems to be based there because that's that's yeah the like everyone would have their serp their their private server is almost always in the Ukraine. It was a pain in the ass because you know if you were an American, you had some serious lag. <laughs> yeah, like everybody seems to have some route out in in Ukraine, um, but I don't. You'd have to base your company there to get around the that that sort of stuff. Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah, and that that would be the difference. Um, I think I recently found, well, I mean, if you, if you found them, send them to me because I need that sort of stuff, Outcast. I will gladly take that off your hands. Um, yeah. Uh, Astral. Uh, could be an ISP in Poland. It's in connected to the internet exchange with an ASN assigned. Um, yeah. Also, by Swiss laws, they can send a request by the Federal Intelligence Service and log anything if mandated by a judge. Jesus Christ. Yeah, um, here's the thing, kids. Don't, um, um, don't, don't, don't think the Swiss are on your side. <laughs> um, they, they haven't been privacy-centric since their banking laws got, like, overhauled in, what, the late 90s? Like, yeah, that Switzerland is not a safe haven anymore. Once upon a time, they were, but not anymore. Um, so yeah, that was Jesus Christ. I've been meaning to do that for a while. I'm gonna have to. Jesus Christ, I'm gonna have to go in and trim that out. I'm gonna have to go in and trim that out. I've been meaning to do that for a long time. And God, I wish I had recorded it. <clears throat> it's not that bad to trim it. I hate doing that shit though. Um, uh, I mean, I have a system for that make echoes i just push a fucking button and fucking i can just you know and it auto uploads oh well fair enough i mean i usually just throw stuff into uh lightworks studios and then just find the beginning find the end cut the rest out move to the left and export and it's done uh ip vanish runs out of the british virgin islands giving them a slight edge over pia which runs out of the u.s we can still subpoena in the british virgin islands there's no there's no edge there um i would i my question is has ip vanish ever been subpoenaed by the u.s federal government and have they been tested in federal court that is my question um because the british virgin islands has extradition and data security agreements they we've got treaties with the british government Right, that it, it it literally makes no difference. Um, GCHQ has complete fucking uh, 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 purview over that portion of the world, which is just another member of the Five Eyes. So it's essentially one and the same as the U.S. digitally, as far as digital security goes. Um, It was never a safe haven only exists because tax evasion is not a crime in Switzerland, so they couldn't send requests for that. For crimes in Switzerland, they always had the ability to do it. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, Yogi, it's it's a, it's a thing. Um, do you, you see the uh, fucking Mexican Supreme Court on abortion? Dude, I did. I did see that. <laughs> fucking Mexico becoming based as shit while we, we revert back. I I'm, The abortion argument to me has been... It's something that I get a lot of flack from with the right is because it's like, it's not a legal issue. Even if you're a statist, right? It's not a legal or policy question. It's a spiritual and philosophical question, right? Like it is a perfectly moral position to believe that abortion is murder. And it is a perfectly moral position to believe that it's my body, my choice. The only people that are really immoral in that argument are the people that believe that abortion is murder, but it's okay sometimes, right? Like those are really the only immoral if you're, people are the people it, that sit in the middle. It's 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 okay. It's it's terrible to do, but if your dad was an asshole, it's fine. Right? You know what I mean? Or you were raped or something. Well, that's or, what I'm saying. You know is I mean? If like, your dad was sorry, an asshole, sorry if that triggered anybody. I'm yeah, well, sorry. that's that's I my. Don't throw the word out without saying something, but it is caboose yeah it's like, yellow watermelon yeah that's that's the your dad was an asshole clause like your dad like fucking you know somebody fucking raped you or incest like yeah you're you're a valuable life and we should save you well except if your dad was an asshole then it's fair to kill you right you know what i mean but both extreme positions are perfectly moral right because i mean like one position literally believes you're 
murdering humans, right? And then the other position says it's not a fucking human and you're denying me access to healthcare, right? And and using the power of the state to stop that. And so I've tried to make this argument with conservatives that like this whole abortion thing, you've got to just give this up. And it's a you losing start argument. fighting this. You got to start yeah. fighting this as a culture and like in, in your community. And, you know, you if you want to help this, like get rid of some of the fucking laws that make it difficult and expensive to adopt in this country. There's no fucking reason that people should find it cheaper to adopt babies from third world countries than here in the United States and then support charity organizations that go to women and try and change the economic conditions that make them feel obligated to abort right like there are a lot of women out there that abort because they can't handle the financial burden of being pregnant so you need to change those economic conditions like that's how you fight this fight from the conservative angle because the legal fight you fucking lost and you're not getting that fight back i and it's stupid to do we uh yeah we had I, I i one of them try and pull the moral shit i was like look i'm not accepting a moral argument from a country from a culture that ex and i just ran through the fucking shit we do and it's like look this this fucking life is sacred bullshit you're trying to pull <laughs> like i'm an american we don't think life is sacred come on like don't even yeah. don't even try that shit like that doesn't fly that doesn't float like we're willing to bomb fucking brown kids back to the stone age if it means it, i was just about to say yeah. like really like like life is sacred so long as you're within the confines of our national border yeah well and not even then really <laughs> fucking <laughs> right you know yeah pre-born yeah that's the that's the argument that i try to make to conservatives is that like and and they just don't fucking get it they're like it's wrong we got to stop it it's like yeah it it's may, murder maybe in your opinion but the fact of the matter is it's a losing argument stop it um, yeah, okay. It's so stupid. <clears throat> and they're like, the Supreme Court will fix it for us. And it's like, dude, like, okay. Amy Comey Barrett is a fucking starry, decisive judge if I've ever seen one. She's not going to fucking overturn Roe v. Wade. So, even if she's square, Catholic. Square. According to an affidavit I found, IP Vanish provided DHS authorities user data at least once. Quote, while it's true IP Vanish does not keep logs, IP Vanish's parent company, High Winds Network Group, does. <laughs> <laughs> we don't keep logs. The people who own us keep the logs. Um, <clears throat> um, okay, so here's one of who several. Is this? Uh, that's IP Vanish, one of the VPN okay. providers. Yeah, it's like, you know, IP Vanish doesn't keep logs. Our, <clears throat> our owner does. Um, <laughs> fucking brilliant argument. Um, so everybody knows IP Vanish is sus. Um, so Outcast provided, here's one of several articles I found about the Rise Up Network's collective being compromised. Thank you, uh, thank you, Outcast. Uh, rumors of a Warren, de uh, Warren Canary's death have been greatly exaggerated. All right, let me. All right. Um. Yeah, they're they're under a gag order. Yeah, I'm gonna pull them. Thank you. Thank you, Outcast. I'm gonna pull that recommendation from the from the. Uh, I mean, they're closed for signups anyway, um, but I'm gonna pull that recommendation. Uh, there's no reason for panic. Our so now we're just down to one. <laughs> yeah, there's no need for panic. Our systems are fully under our control. We will provide additional d information at a later date. Um, foot and then four. Our prior tweets did not have any hidden subtext. Yeah. Um. <laughs> They, they've since then they've been publishing their warrant canary it's been updated 10 times but not at regular intervals um no it's they're they're off the list 100 so thank you did Apple. you hear about uh raytheon doing a deal with uh sky scepter in poland no yeah raytheon is selling fucking anti anti fucking air missiles and fucking all kinds of like advanced weaponry to poland now It'll be interesting to see what I look I look uh, forward to like the um bombing of a like a gay like LGBT pride parade with fucking Raytheon missiles or something. Yeah, they're selling them fucking cruise missiles. <laughs> I'm just like Jesus Christ, can like that these? area of the world didn't need more fucking bombs. Can, like Yeah, can we stop. read these fuckers in already? Jesus Christ. Damn fucking cruise missiles to Poland. Um, yeah, and that's and apparently that is <clears throat> phase one 
of their Wizla program. I, I don't even. No one even knows what Phase Two and Three phase, are. Phase Two is nukes. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? Um, I really distrust distrust VPNs. Generally, is that unfounded? No, Chomsky, it's not unfounded. Um, like, should I use one anyways? Yeah, VP uh, PIA, uh, private internet access. Chomsky, it's the only one who's been tested. All the rest of them are speculative at best. Um. So yeah, private internet access, uh, internet access, PIA. Paranoid question here. I'm making a new Twitch account through PIA and Tor. How compromised is my new account if I identify, uh, identify myself on Twitch chat? Compromised. It doesn't matter what degree. Oh, sure. uh, a crack in the, a, a hole in the dam will bring the entire dam down. It doesn't matter how small that hole is. It, it, it's 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 a binary i know like we as leftists are like mentally trained to be like oh there's nuance and grays all over the world when we're talking about operational security it is a binary state you either are secure or you aren't also for the record if you've ever streamed before right and you go into mod view there are i can guarantee you because kai's not banning them left and right there's probably six or seven bots right now and they're ip bots mm -hmm. these are companies that are logging every single solitary word that is said every link that is shared every piece of audio every piece of video that is occurring right now and that information is being transmitted to different corporations as we speak so everything that you put here is like not just being looked at on Twitch's end, but multiple corporations are transmitting all of that data. So there's a ton of information out there and anything you put in Twitch chat has, has spread all over different places in the internet. <laughs> Xol put in all bots that copy this line are gay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's how they <clears throat> catch you for like DMCA and stuff, right? Like you ever see a stream and it just gets immediately nuked? Because of DMCA, that's because there's an IP bot like checking that shit. Uh, Viva, Viva said about Poland, it'll probably be a women's march. Um, <laughs> <laughs> women's march blown up, brought to you by Raytheon. Oh, um, God. Um, ah, no worries, Chomsky. Um, probably because America won't be buying any more missiles for Afghanistan, so they got to make up for the numbers. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> ACC Picatinny, boys. Sierra, uh, Sierra Univision, uh, no, Unidynamics, eight, eight different companies already spent $350 million to arm the Middle East with, uh, anti, anti-tank grenade launchers, um, AK-47s, um, what else? Um, a bunch of small arms and munitions. The big, the big stuff's coming from Turkey. Trust you can follow the money. Like we're we might be leaving Afghanistan, but we're going, we're going into Somalia. We're going into Yemen. We're going into other parts of the Middle East. We're going back into Syria. I was about to mention Syria. Well, I mean we're I mean we're we're funding a ton of money towards um uh, Hay Hay Tahir Al Sham, which is led by Al Julani, which is an offshoot of Al Nusra, which is basically the rebranded Al Qaeda. So, I mean, trust. And, and the thing is, is that Syria is currently in a condition where Haït Tahir al-Sham is, um, they own all of the wheat fields right now in the Idlib province, which is one of the few places in Syria where you can abundantly grow wheat. Um, and so they're making sure to starve out the, um, you know, the Assad regime. It, trust. Um, like, they're, there's going to be war... <laughs> kicking off Ra there Raphael and we'll be involved Raphael you straight up showing your age there um I love it Scott will, S Scott you'll be appreciate this one Raphael goes how Buds. long <laughs> how long before I run <laughs> yes Scott's <laughs> fucking Scott's blast. Scud missiles man oh man fucking blast from the past man fucking oh, the dreaded that's Scud a, that's a fucking that's a fucking Gulf War <laughs> shit right there Duffy, is this the 90s? <laughs> oh, man, fucking scuds. Well, what about the elite Republican guard? Oh, oh God. Are you, is that, are you, are you referencing Bill Hicks? Yes, yes, oh, I God. am. Oh, Good boy. This is why we're friends, even Good though we boy. fucking have disparate ideologies. Yep, fuck it. But the elite Republican guard. What's, what's this button do? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Bring it up, fucking. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, we've, we've yet to face oh, the elite shit. Republican card. Fucking, God, why did why did Bill Hicks have to die, man? Because all the good ones die young, man. That's we know the Fucking we know the man. deal. Fucking like being a being a prick is like taking a vitamin in this world. Oh my God! I just you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck would like him being mad at capitalism and like shopping malls and like uh, what is it? Uh, Oh, what's, what's that white rapper from the nineties? Fucking at, at vanilla ice, vanilla ice, sucking Satan's cock and doing that entire fucking bit. Like, can you imagine what would happen? Oh, fucking. I, I, Scott, I, I, I can is that an ANCAP flag. Yeah. I'm an ANCAP. I'm the only one allowed on the channel. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Um, uh, the fucking Jay Leno bit with the fucking Uzi. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking you, uh, and his, the and this brain matter and blood splatters in an NBC logo behind his head because he's a company man until the end. <laughs> yeah. God, oh, I miss Bill Hicks. Man. I miss Bill Hicks. <sighs> man, that dude. For you youngins, fucking like yeah, fucking go watch a full Bill Hicks run. Um, and you ever see that the the clip of him taking that chick down, like who was heckling him in that club? Mm -hmm. I've dude i've seen literally everything there is on the internet of bill hicks yeah unless someone has like some fucking vhs recording that they like didn't put on youtube or on the internet um one of my um uh, you ever see that mark Marin bit talking about bill hicks yeah yeah where he's like he's like i'm a fucking poet he's just <laughs> screaming at the audience that he's a poet and an old lady just goes well then well, tell, tell us a poem, poem. <laughs> yeah Fucking oh man, I you know yeah. I miss um, oh, I miss Angry Jesus. I miss Angry Jesus. He was he was yeah. There's there's not gonna be another him walking around. Yeah, if you're if you're a youngin and you don't know who Bill Hicks is, basically understand this: that George Carlin and Bill Hicks paved the way for every single comedian you've ever heard tell a political joke. Yeah. Um, like political comedy just doesn't have an existence without understanding Bill Hicks and and George Carlin. And if you really want your fucking comedy history, Lenny Bruce, when he was being arrested for profanity on stage, if you turned the camera on the audience, there was no camera filming at that time. We're talking many decades ago at this point. Yeah. Um, if you turned the camera around and looked into the audience, there would have been a young George Carlin watching Bruce be hauled off in handcuffs for saying yeah. profane things on stage. And Carlin would later go on to take the case all the way to the Supreme Court for yep. the seven dirty things. Uh, seven dirty words. Seven dirty words you can't say on television. Um, these, these are men who literally fought for that concept of freedom of speech. Um, and they did it using one of the most powerful weapons we have, humor. That's one of the things I always think is funny about, like, conservatives that are, like, and, and libertarians even more so, right? That are so mad. They're like, our rights are being taken away on a daily basis. I'm like, yes, they are. The state fucking sucks. But also understand that, like, all of these rights that you think, like, you've just had since 1789 like most of them didn't really come to fruition until like the 50s yeah. and like for black people they didn't come to fruition until like the 80s i was gonna say <laughs> yesterday like, like, like of. none of those fucking rights existed in the 1700s or the 1800s or the first half of the 1900s um chomsky last last security question how do you actually receive orders off the dark web to your address it, it there is an intrinsic trust that is established amongst those that are participating in illegal activities it's it's the it's the unspoken shibboleth you're committing a crime i'm committing a crime and at some point we have to trust each other and what we're doing is trusting each other with our levels of criminality so yeah you get it mailed to an address if you've got a dead drop, if you've got somebody who else is who else is willing to receive your mail, if you've got a neighbor who is off on vacation, there's all sorts of methods for obfuscating that. But most people, they just get it mailed to them. 
So there's your answer. Um, thank you, thank you, Sunshine. Um, yeah, I, I, I fucking miss those fuckers. Um, I really do. Um, Sunshine. Yes, we are. So who's that? What's that? We shit. Um, <laughs> yes, we you are. Fucking capitalist. <laughs> You're an anti-statist. Um. No, but I, I do. I yes, do, we are. <laughs> um, I do love Mexico getting based as shit as we fucking like regress. I think that's a hilarious development, and it's only going to increase the um, uh, the medical tourism industry for those border towns. Like we've already got, like, dude, there's a lot of fucking medical and uh, medical tourism that goes across that border, a lot. Right. I, I I would be I would be remiss because my chat and people want me to consistently ask you how you feel about the Republic of Cospia. Oh, um, I mean, how do I feel about them? I think it's a, a good uh, a length test and an ability to push up against somebody like the Papal States. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that's is a microcosmic test for a lot of communitarian principles. Why they claim them as capitalists. What's that? Do they claim them as capitalists? Yeah. Is that what you said? I mean, they work in a market economy, but I wouldn't call them fucking capitalists. Yeah, they Some were they were communitarians. That's that's that their distribution of resources was done along communitarian lines. Um, so how do I feel about them? I think it's a really good test run. Um, mm -hmm. Being able to run something for 375 years with the papal states pressing on you, I think that's a that's a good that's a good pressure test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, they, but they are a, a, a admittedly a microcosmic test, but I mean, everything has to do a microcosmic test, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it's not like a fucking nation state's going to fucking yeah. <laughs> dissolve itself into anarchism <clears throat> without fucking <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. Yeah. I, 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 think they, I think they're a really good example of uh, a test run, um, 375 years without judges, without lawyers, without police, without like an army. Right, they became a, right. They became a refuge for uh, outcasts um, when the Jewish populace, when the Jewish Jewish uh, populace started being um, persecuted by the Catholics again um, uh, across the papal states. They uh, many of them, um, many of the diaspora settled in Cospaya, um and ran mm -hmm. like uh, tobacco warehouses um, because tobacco was legal. Um, to be grown and sold in Cospaya because they didn't have the moralism that fucking the, the papal states were running. Um, so they yeah. integrated themselves well um, historically um, and they were welcomed. Uh, the, the anarchists of Cospaya were like, yeah, whatever. You know, you're cool. Come on in. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's I, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, you know, Curious, that tends to be the, 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 the favorite of, of uh, at least the ANCAPs over where I'm at. Um, it tends to be their favorite. Yeah, they they were economically highly successful, um, so I can see why they would uh, default to them. Um, they 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 did. They outcompeted the fuck out of those neighboring papal states, um, mainly because their willingness to engage in marketplaces that they didn't have moral qualms with. They're just like, right. you know, you can moralize your way out of the economy all you want. We're gonna fucking grow <laughs> and sell it. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> like fucking all they saw was a, a a fucking you know a market segment that could be exploited. <laughs> like whatever. But um, yeah, they, they you know they. But as far as resource distribution um, internally uh, goes, generally speaking, most political scientists classify them as communitarians. Um, they they operated very much like a very large family. Yeah, I mean their hierarchical structure was also family based. Yeah, it, it was it was communitarian, um, for for sure, um, but their their governance was operated via a, a hierarchical anarchistic lines. Um, they used uh, they used the standard fucking wise man fucking respected elder technique of selecting delegates for any conflict and that sort of uh, that sort of thing usually. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, um, oh yeah, finally, uh, the, the, um, <clears throat> largest remaining Confederate statue looks like it's coming down. Which Vir one is that one? The Virginia. One in Virginia? Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. That's, that's the one that, um, 
I think that's the only one that actually pisses me off. Like, we should have kept that one. Um, that was, yeah, that was the uh, fucking, the governor said it's coming down. Yeah, well, we'll see. The governor has been saying it's going to come down for a while. It's still in the courts. Um, it's scheduled to be taken out in a couple of days. It's, uh, it, it's we'll, we'll see. We'll see if another injunction gets filed. That's fair. That's fair. Right. Because I mean, cause there's a couple of pe there's a couple of things. The, the thing about that statue that's different than most other statues, right. Is that it was privately owned and then the sellers sold that statue to the government. Yeah. It's the, con and owned as by the part of selling it, the contract said that the statue couldn't be taken down. Um, yeah. Right. So it's like it's a, it's kind of a viola violation of the of of the deed. So it, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. It's the it's the only one that I think needs to stay up. I think it's absolutely absurd that they would take that one down. I. Um, the rest of them can go for all I give a fuck. I right. Mean, but I mean, there is an option. Uh, there's two options. One of them would be illegalist. Um, and I, I think we, <laughs> right. we all know that option. Um, and then there's the other option that like, um, put it in a fucking museum. The, the statue we're referencing is in Richmond, Virginia, which is where I live, right. Um, on monument Avenue. Now the solution that I posed, which, you know, who the fuck gives a fuck what I think, but you know, either way is that they've added to Monument Avenue over the years, and there are places for additional statues. For example, the Arthur Ashe statue is there, right? Um, I always said, you know, what they should have done is instead of trying to take that statue down, Add there's more. a spot for a statue one block away, and I think it should have just been Brown v. Board of Education. They should have just commissioned an artist, right, to have like a statue of, of yes, no. commemorating Brown v. Board of Education. Um, yeah, Duffy. It's it's a statue of Robert E. Lee. Um, yeah, it's Robert E. Lee statue. The Stonewall Jackson one was taken down, you know, was taken down almost as soon as the riots started. But the Robert E. Lee one is different because of the legal constraints of taking it down. Um. I mean, I know I'm not going to find too many people friendly to my I, my belief there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, all I'm I just think for his story, for history's sake, this one, right? The the oldest one, the one from the capital of the Confederacy. Like, I don't think you solve it by by taking it down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, I think you just bury the dark history. Oh. I think they should have added to that history. I mean, it basically. It's a bro. Okay. <clears throat> How do I? Okay. In no way, shape, or form am I making any suggestions. In no way, shape, or form am I making any suggestions. But it is a bronze statue. Does anybody remember their organic chem class? It's a bronze statue. Just saying. Um. Anyway. Yeah, like just move it. Just put it in a fucking museum. Um, it, it's just move it to the Smithsonian and say like we're giving it a place of honor amongst our like federal history, and we're recognizing the importance of the statue in a historical context, and we want to move it to the Smithsonian. I I I would. That's an acceptable compromise. And then we'll just see. Put, we'll see what happens. I don't just, know. I just, then just put I a fucking plaque outside of it and say, this is the fucking statue to the losers. Um, <laughs> fucking yeah, I mean, to be, to be fair to Robert E. Lee, right? Robert E. Lee specifically said before dying that he no didn't statues. want any statues. Yeah, no statues. And that was why that statue went up directly after his death. Yeah. Right. Like the man. It's also it was a commissioned statue also by like a very famous artist in, in Europe at the time. It's, I mean, like, you put it, put it in the fucking Smithsonian and call it a day. It's just different than those ones that went up in the 50s, you know? Uh, 
Are they allowed by the contract to sell it? They're not allowed to, no. There you go. I mean, that seems like a dumb fucking, like, who would sign that contract? In purple. Well, I mean, it was signed, like, in, like, the fucking 20s. Right? right. No one no one foresaw, like, I mean, they could have foreseen it, but, who? which is why they put it in the is contract, there no, right? Is there no way to but nullify <laughs> that contract? What's that? Is there no way to nullify that contract? Well, I mean, they're, I mean, presumably, because they're going to fucking take it down, right? <laughs> It just seems like that. That's, that's. Can you get a link to the contract? I don't know where it is exactly. Um, I've, I mean, like I've seen articles referencing it and stuff before, but that we're talking about the court cases. Um, right, because Richmond City, the mayor of Richmond City, you know, had the other statues taken down. Like I said, almost immediately, but they couldn't take that one down for those reasons. I mean, the Supreme Court of Virginia has ruled that it's it's you can remove it. Yeah, yeah, but it may it may go up higher than that. I doubt it, though. I don't think an appellate court's going to touch the fucking case. I mean, because like if you're if you're an appellate judge, you know, the moment you fucking decide to accept that case, you can just kiss fucking being being on like, you know, one of the major district courts or Supreme court judge goodbye forever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like no it. fucking president is ever going to fucking appoint you to a higher position after that point, because they're going to be like, um, yeah, I don't need this in the fucking media. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's bronze, not copper. Excel, Excel said, if it's made out of copper, if you really want to just get rid of it, just get a bunch of meth heads. Um, <laughs> right. Hey guys, you see that thing up there? Yeah, it's copper. <laughs> Just some fucking some some rednecks that work in construction. Hey, you know that's made of copper, right? <laughs> <laughs> Poof, it's gone. Uh, overnight, that fucker'd be gone. That'd be amazing. Um, oh, let's see. Um. Oh, yeah. Did you see the fucking Catholic preschool teacher shit with the mom? It's fucking amazing. Um, no. She, let me, let me get the, hold on. Um, first, you, you gotta, you gotta see the mom's mug shot. All right. So, <laughs> just eat the, the foot. Okay. Yeah. Like you can see it in her face. Like, mm, yeah, whatever. Hey, can I just give a quick piece of legal advice to people um, in chat, especially since this is Proudly Radicals chat. When you take a mug shot, make sure that your mug shot looks bad and make sure that your mug shot makes you look somber. Because here's the dirty little secret. That smirk from that mug shot is going to be used as evidence in a court of law and shown to a jury I don't even know what she did yet. She'll walk. And then what and, and the lawyer is gonna the prosecutor is gonna say, does this look like someone who's remorseful? She'll walk. Does this look like some right? She'll walk. The teacher um mm -hmm. was caught on camera for three hours abusing her two year old son. In what way? Um oh let's see. Fists pulling them around, biting them, carrying them by their arms and legs um hitting them with her adult fists um yeah three hours of abuse from an adult woman to a two-year-old boy um captured on videotape and then shown to this woman and then told by the school administrator that no the teacher would not be uh relieved of their duty and they, that she would continue to serve as her son's teacher You're going to have trouble getting a jury to convict that one. She could be standing there with a fucking, like, we're number one foam finger, and they wouldn't touch that one. I don't know, man. Um, yeah. Three hours? That's fucking wild. Yeah. Three hours. She sat there and watched that video. For three hours, 
I watched his teacher spank him, hit him in the head, slap him with a book, shove him to the ground, snatch him up by one arm, carry him across the room multiple times, slam him into his seat to make him eat lunch alone in timeout, pick him up by his ankles, hold him by his neck and head, grab his face so hard his cheeks were touching in his mouth as she was nose to nose with him amongst other things. The daycare director dismissed her employee's actions and ensured me she would be keeping her job. She'll be walking on that one. Why do you think she'll walk? Oh, they'll slap her on the wrist. It's 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 fucking Georgia, and they're Catholic. It's a Catholic. Georgia's school. not Georgia's not very Catholic, though. That's my point. She's not Catholic. The school is. the The daycare is Catholic. It's mm-hmm. Georgia. They have a videotape of her son being brutally abused for three hours. They're fucked. She's going to get a slap on the wrist at most. Yeah, and she's white. She's a white woman. You would already know about the conviction rates for white women. She's going to walk. Just no, that's not happening. It's like that fucking dude from Texas whose son was being molested by his karate teacher and he fucking, like, on camera popped the dude in the fucking dome with a revolver and they fucking dismissed it. It's not happening. She's, she's fine. She knows exactly. In that mugshot, she knows exactly what's up. Take the fucking picture. I'd do it again. And so she just, I mean, what did what did she do to the woman? The um, abuser. Yeah, oh, she, um, <clears throat> she basically went to town on her. She went to town on her. She just did what you'd expect a mom to do. Like, you know, she, she went back, she went ape shit on her fucking like slamming her head and fucking back of the head just basically wailing on her yeah yeah i mean folks <laughs> another piece of legal advice <laughs> while, we're, while we're while we're out there um learn what juror nullification is and then keep your fucking mouth shut about it oh yeah i've got um um uh... What's the what's the command? I I have an article on jury nullification. Um, fucking links, links, links. Uh, exclamation jury null. Um, there's there's your guidelines. Um, yeah, I'll I'll walk you through what it is, and then you know how how what do I do? Take jury duty. Second, shut up about it. It's third part, shut up about it. Part two. Um, and then fourth, yeah, yeah. fourth part, the art of persuasion. Um, and so, yeah. Yes, the mug. Yeah, sh- no, Silver Ogre. I was, I was confused at first too. I was like, "What do you mean she'll get away with it?" And then I realized that you were saying that's that the was the mother. Yeah, that's the mom. She'll be walking. Yeah, yeah. They're they're, they're not going to touch her. Like that that that's going to get before a fuck. If it makes it past the judge. I'll be surprised. Like, if I were the prosecuting attorney in that case, I'd be like, why did you bring me this case? You're right. It's like, I'm trying to fucking be attorney general. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, this is, like this I, don't, is poison. I don't need a conviction on this case This at is all. poison. Why is why is this on my desk? Like, this this never should have made it to me. Like, I, I'd, I'd fucking, I'd dick slap whoever brought that to me if I were a fucking prosecutor. Like, fuck you. First off, fuck you. Um, and, and second, some, there's some fucking fucking not intern, but like some fucking dude that just got the job as a prosecutor that this is being handed off to, so that he can fuck the case up. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, feel free to not disclose. Some, feel some free to fucking not disclose black evidence. dude that finally got a job as a prosecutor, and they're like, "Here, darky, how about you have this fucking give, case?" Give and it he's to just like, give what it to the Johnson. Fuck, man? Give it to Johnson. Um, yeah, like that. That's just. Like there's, there's no way that's making it to fucking trial because I mean, Jesus Christ, if a prosecutor tries to take that to trial, like apparently she did beat the teacher fairly brutally, but I mean, she could have murdered her. I'm telling you, she'd get away with it. Like she, she could have fucking stood in front of the police station and fucking stared at the, the chief of police and just fucking popped that teacher in the, in the skull with a nine mil and they fucking give her a plea deal. Don't take this right. to trial. <laughs> take this to trial. She's getting away with it. 
Like, there's no fucking way. Three hours that video goes on. Just three hours of brutal abuse of her two-year-old son by a Catholic teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to know anything about, like, also the unfairness of, like, gender and race in these situations, too, which I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I am going to give you guys some information that you probably didn't have, and I probably shouldn't because I'm a right wing, but fuck it. Um, in insurance, there's a list, okay? And the way these lists work is they value clients, or I should not say clients. They value um parties in um in pre in in litigation and in claims for let's say car insurance right and what they do we i almost <clears throat> pause i don't want to say anything that'll get me into trouble um they have lists and they list the race and the age and the perceived attractiveness of the person and they assign different values to the race, the age, and the perceived attractiveness of people based upon the fact of avoiding court proceedings and moving this to litigation. Because they know that if you are an attractive white female, they need to offer you more money in your car crash or you're not going to take it and, it and it changes the likelihood of them winning or losing in a court proceeding. There's actually a really interesting example of this being talked about um, in, you remember the show, uh, The League on FX? I mean, I knew it, but I never really watched it. You said perceived sexy. No, but they actually, they, 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 so like if you're, let's say your face is injured, right? And you're like a 22 year old, attractive, blonde, white girl that is worth exponentially more money in a court of law than let's say being like a a five out of 10, 35 year old dude that gets scarred um, in the face permanently. They're one of the characters in the show is um, mm -hmm. one of them. Two of them are attorneys. Uh, one of them is a, 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 a work in, uh, is a prosecutor. And one of them is private practice. Um, and then one of the characters is a fairly well successful um, plastic surgeon. And mm -hmm. they're talking about this case that they have uh, about um, how this woman was involved in a car accident and the fucking private practice one. He says, you know, our client fucking paid for her reconstructive surgery and now she's coming at us uh, again and she's fucking, she, now she's a 10 out of 10 and before she was a fucking 5 out of 10 and the fucking plastic surgeon starts rattling off about how her life is going to be easier now, how she's going to get a job easier and all these sorts of like added perks to being physically attractive now and they're like, wait, really? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, no, we have entire studies on this. And he's like, do you want to be an expert witness? So they bring him in as an expert witness in the case in the trial to be like, yeah, <laughs> like she's she's objectively more beautiful now than she was earlier, in my professional opinion. And given what we know about societal impact of attractiveness, she that is worth this. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a thing. Like it's it's in a fucking comedy show that they even talked about this. Show. Like, yeah. yeah, it's it's, it's a thing. Yeah, what I, what I mean to say is in court, right? So when you have a when you have a white blonde woman saying like an attractive young white blonde woman saying that their face is permanently scarred, right? And they're asking for let's say 1.2 million dollars. The jury looks at that and doesn't even think that that's yeah. that that's absurd. He was just going for they're the like joke. they're like, "Oh my god, that poor woman," right? But when you see like some random fucking dude with a scarred face, they're going to laugh you out. They're going to laugh at you for asking for over a million dollars. They're going to laugh at you for asking for more than 200 grand. Um, so here's Duffy found the, the contract, by the way. Um, here's, oh, okay. Here's, yeah. I mean, I didn't look for it. Here's, here's the paragraph. Like it's got a, it's got a copy of the page, uh, even like the, the actual handwritten the script but here's here's the paragraph <clears throat> 
the state of Virginia party to a party of the third part acting by and through the governor of the Commonwealth and pursuant to the terms and provisions of the special statute herein before mentioned executes this instrument in token of her acceptance of the gift and of her guarantee that she will hold said statue and pedestal and circle of ground perpetually sacred to the monumental purpose to which they have been devoted and that she will faithfully guard it and affectionately protect it. Yeah, that's see, that's what I was talking about. Is that like it's it's just very different than other statues, right? Because they're they're legally beholden, supposedly, to not moving or selling or doing anything with the statue. Um. So you know, but yeah, um, yeah. And if you want to know how fucked our legal system, if you want to know how fucked this system is, court systems really do like there are attorneys arguing. Like, what is the valuation of your attractiveness, and how uh, how is that going to impact our case? Mm -hmm. It's it's kind it's kind of fucked. Um, and it's usually not even done by attorneys. It's usually done by um, by by the insurance company, um, eight, by the insurance agents that are working in like um, uh, bodily injury or bodily harm. Um, did you see the the QAnon shaman? I heard that the QAnon shaman pleaded or something, right? Well, his new legal defense. Mm -hmm. Trump was his first love. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, that's his new legal defense. I developed a lot of um, he had a fondness for Trump that was not unlike the first love a man may have for a girl or a girl for a man or a man for a man, his attorney, Mr. Watkins, said. The first love always, always maintains a tender and soft spot in the heart of the lover. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? No. Only the QAnon shaman could find a lawyer like that. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is wrong with these people, man? Yeah, he's he's arguing oh. that fucking he was his first love. Um and that's you know, yeah. Um <laughs> hey, what? This system is so bad I have one cousin that's been a lawyer for years and another that's just starting school for it. Good luck to those people because there are more there are more people in law school than there are attorneys in the United States, and that field is shrinking. Um, Marcus is actually, I don't know if Marcus is here right now, but Marcus filed his first brief um, last week or the week nice. before. Um, nice. And is waiting but yeah, for I'm it just to saying, be accepted. It's, yeah. it's a bad field to get into, kids. Don't go to law school right now. Um, yeah. So we got If you're doing it to like make money and work and work as a lawyer, like... Unless you are a fucking badass and you know that you want to be a trial lawyer, a lot of the jobs that lawyers used to be hired for are now just being done by regular employees and computer systems and templates. IT took over everything. Mm-hmm. Once lawyer? you get one lawyer to, to write a draft and then IT can handle it from there and just replace the fucking blanks with new names, huh. right? Like the world is moving towards adhesion contracts as opposed to negotiating contracts between individuals i represented myself in course one uh, court once i said no seatbelt fine got dropped um <laughs> and, um yeah let's see um oh yeah uh yeah, fuck me it. trey I'm, I'm not i'm not trying to me trey i'm not trying to say that like don't because the only reason i'm saying like avoid being a lawyer right now is because the amount of jobs that are available in the market, like if you're fucking passionate about something, like I'm not saying don't go for it, but if your goal is to like get gainful employment as a lawyer, that is becoming increasingly more difficult. Um, oh, this guy, this guy, oh, this guy, this fucking guy, um, 79 year old out of California has been sentenced to four years uh, for charging small businesses and charities inflated uh, prices for printer toner. And you're like, this guy's doing time for charging inflated price. No, motherfucker. In a six-year stretch, he sold $126 million worth of inflated toner to unsuspecting victims and charities and shit like that. Who the fuck was buying this shit? $126 million dollars in printer toner so like three cartridges um yeah 
tens of thousands of small businesses and charities this fucker was working. He utilized, he basically did a uh, boiler scam telemarketing for printer, uh, for printer toner. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I feel like if you're dumb, I mean, I don't know if you're talking to the wrong guy, but I feel like if you're dumb enough to buy that, then like, that's kind of on you. He, apparently he's been running this, this grift since the 1970s. <laughs> He got away with I, it. I just, he got away with I it for like 50, 50 years. Why are people buying this toner? Like, you know what I mean? Like, wh what did he? What did he do that was illegal? I'm trying to understand. Like, he sold things at a markup. Like, um, t ten. He was yeah, yeah. Basically, like he was using pressure tactics to get people to sell for fucking uh, to buy for ten times the uh, price of the toner. <clears throat> I mean, did he have like some form of monopsony on the market in this area? I don't understand. He um. No, he fucked up where everybody fucks up. He got greedy. He, um, conspiracy mail fraud and money laundering. Oh, well then, yeah, put him in prison for that, like, 100%. But, I mean, like, if you're just selling shit at a markup, like, and there's other options, like, those people are just idiots for buying that. Yeah, he, he, over the 50 years, it's estimated hundreds of millions of dollars. He did 126 mil in markup in one six-year stretch. Yeah. Like this, this motherfucker was like the wolf of Wall Street of printer toner. <laughs> right. I don't know, man. More power to him. I say fuck, fuck yeah, until you committed fraud, right? Um. Yeah. Like he he was running game apparently. Um. I think it's your duty to be an informed consumer, but if someone starts frauding you, then yeah. Well, I'm sure there were all sorts of promises made that weren't kept too. On. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there was some shit like that too. You're right. I mean, you know, nobody makes that much money without fraud. Yeah, he, he, there was, there was all sorts. It's just what they could pin on him. And I don't mean that just selling printer toner. I mean, no individual in America makes like a hundred and twenty million dollars without some fraud occurring somewhere. Yeah, that's just how that works. Um. No, uh, yeah, dancing, yeah, you don't, don't let those two cross. Log out of your, your account, like, first you have to understand, phones are pretty intrinsically fucked to start with, um, just because the Google software, like, I'm guessing since you've Gmail, you probably have an Android phone, um, the, the account systems on phones are pretty fucking, um, well woven into the fabric of this uh of the operating system on the phone um so at the very least i would say you should be logged out of that stuff when you vpn in and create that new gmail account yeah and then log out of that and then disconnect from your vpn and log back into your primary yeah um Oh, yeah, that one fucking too. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, de Google your Android. Dude, fucking. Yeah, it's all. This, um, this video, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get into so much fucking trouble on this one. <laughs> fucking, this is, dude, the, the fucking, the left is gonna come at me hard on this one. Um, I can't wait to see who fucking yells at me behind the scenes for, for doing this, but I'm doing this. So everybody agrees this is an indigenous culture. Apparently, it's some some weird fucking emo shit, like done up like hardcore. I've seen like several hundreds of people weigh in on this. This is not indigenous appropriation. This is not a war headdress. This is some weird fucking bullshit emo crap. Um, also, the motherfucker who does that fucking like little, little supposed takedown sells Hey Colonizer merch on his website on his website yeah like literally t-shirts and hats that just say hey colonizer on them and shit like that it's like all right bro oh my god yeah i can't wait i can't wait till we launch our merch we're not big enough to do it yet it's just not it's not smart to do um but one of the first things i'm doing is i'm getting a uh 
a t-shirt and in the front it's just gonna have brackets and it's just gonna say insert trendy communist revolutionary here and then on the back it's just gonna say monetizing communism <laughs> <laughs> just to, like make fun of people with their shake with era t-shirts um you know yeah it was it that that made the rounds and people are like oh for fuck's sake man um it, it's it's not it's some weird emo shit apparently like somebody like it, it, somebody even said like if anything it's appropriating edward scissorhands and like <laughs> um like i mean like at what at what point does your cultural appropriation become transformative it's it's appropriate it's it's culturally appropriating kiss and edward scissorhands <laughs> uh fucking yeah oh yep duffy that's that's appropriated kiss yes yeah, fucking multiple people saw that yeah but but i'm, I'm, I'm honest question though right like at what point is cultural appropriation just is is it transformative you know what i mean like uh, yeah I, you know what i mean like and apparently it's supposed to be uh it's an emo thing apparently or something it, it's it's supposed to be monster hair which is what this is, apparently. It's not even a fucking Indian headdress. No, it's point. not. It's like, like it's not even a take on an Indian headdress. It's no, a take it, on an entirely different culture yes. that you're offended for yourself on behalf of others. And buy my merch. About. Yeah. And buy my merch. Yeah. <laughs> And somebody fucking, they were like, well, you're appropriating our colonizer capitalist culture. Right. <laughs> like they turned it right around. They're like, well, you're caught. You're, you're fucking appropriating our shit now. <laughs> like, fucking, if you're profiting from fucking that crap, then, well, sorry, bro. But yeah, it was, it was like, ugh, I don't. Apparently everybody involved in that video, like the dude in the weird emo goth outfit shit, um is a douchebag and apparently the dude who sells the hey colonizer merch is a douchebag too like everybody involved in that video are apparently terrible people so yeah but i'm sure um i'm sure i'm I'm looking forward to the the dms and the whispers that i'll be receiving from indigenous twitch on that one <laughs> It, Who it, cares? It happens. It happens. So many people are so mad about fucking like, uh, like about like Twitter or something. Like, who cares if you get mobbed on Twitter? I just don't apologize and hold your ground. Same fucking rule as always. Um, right. And then it'll disappear <coughs> because Twitter's fucking full of a bunch of ADHD spurgs. We'll move on to the next thing to be mad about. Um. So apparently, like, um fucking anton Laz uh, lazaro uh, apparently he's some gop donor in minnesota um he's facing sex trafficking charges he uh apparently offered this this is this is how you know dude he's facing sex trafficking charges and he offered a thousand dollars in hush money to an underage girl and her parents to keep them quiet thousand a thousand is that even like their rent for the month he's like motherfucker like he, he he asked the girl and the parents to sign a non-disclosure agreement which by the way doesn't cover fucking criminal activities like do these motherfuckers know anything um yeah, no i mean like literally like you can't <laughs> nda your way out of a fucking crime right you, you have contracts contracts are valid so long as the contract is not held under duress so long as it is not held under illegality so long as it is not held under uh, so long as it's not an unconscionable contract and then also so long as it's not fraudulent he's um he's being charged with five counts of sex trafficking of minors one count of attempted attempted sex trafficking of a minor and one count of conspiracy to commit sex trafficking of minors and three counts of obstruction and he tried to cover it up by paying a thousand dollars to one of the girls in her family like the the primary witness it's like motherfucker apparently he's a prominent gop donor as well like he's got cash he's got cash like i don't what i don't i don't a thousand hubris. bucks a thousand bucks yeah like motherfucker time to open the wallet 
You're right? fa- you're like, facing I, sex trafficking charges. Now is not the time to be stingy, motherfucker. You know what's weird about that? Right? Like, obviously, I'm just kind of like armchair psychology here, right? But, like, this reeks of someone that thinks they did nothing wrong. Yeah, a thousand bucks. Just go away. It's nothing anyway. I mean, like remorse, right? I don't mean like not feeling guilt. No. I mean that he legitimately believes that everything he did was perfectly above the board and that like just there just should be like no issue with like old white dudes fucking little kids. Yeah, it's just it's like, was he a Catholic priest? No, no, just a GOP donor, which is, yeah, I mean, when we're talking sexual abuse of children is kind of the same thing, really. Um. Yeah, I, 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 I had a good chuckle over that. I'm like, $1,000, hush money to the parents and the daughter, right? No, that's that's you pay for her college, lifetime of health care and therapy, and you cover our mortgage is the starting negotiation for that. Right. Right, like, you're looking at multiple sex trafficking charges here. Like, yeah, but he tried to be stingy on it. You gotta, <laughs> I'll pay you 1000 bucks to go away. Oh my god, can you imagine how bad that's going to look in court? Oh, he's going down. Oh my god. That's going to sink him alone. That alone will sink him. That's that's mens rea right there. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely mens rea. Yeah, uh, for those of you that don't speak douchebag, it's um, fucking the guilty mind. Um, it's a necessary element of convicting somebody of a, of a criminal act, is you have to prove that they knew what they were doing was wrong. Um, it's mens rea and yeah, it's, that's, that's mens rea right there. Fucking he's going down for that act alone for fucking trying to be a cheap fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> mens rea for a thousand dollar mea culpa. <laughs> <laughs> fucking douchebag. Fucking. You know I mean? Fucking. I'm sorry. Can I get that fucking, can I get that quoted somewhere? Like, I'm. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> I thought ignorance of the law was no excuse. You'd be surprised what's an excuse, Rev. You just have to have a good enough attorney to argue it. Oh, God, yeah. It's, uh, I, I forget. I wish I could remember whose bit that was. Um, oh, for fuck's sake, what are you... Hang on. Um... Ignorance of the law is no excuse unless you're a police officer. In which case it is. Um, it is literally. <laughs> There's case law about it. Um, <laughs> and there, I can't remember the Supreme Court decision off the top of my head, but there's a Supreme Court decision that basically says that if a police officer doesn't realize what he's doing is wrong, then it's okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, actually, I wish I could remember whose bit that was. Um, but it was a comedian ages ago that um, he said, you know, I'm trying to get. He said, I want, he said right now, my, he said, my career is going well right now. I'm, I'm at like run a stoplight uh, kind of money. He said, but I want to get up to beat my wife money. He said, I, I'm, not, I'm not looking to beat my wife. I just want to, I want to have an income that would let me buy an attorney that would get me off for beating my wife. That's basically our legal system in a nutshell. How much cash you got? Hmm, well, you got you got OJ Simpson murder my wife money. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is my favorite conspiracy theory. I don't think OJ did it. I think OJ did it. I oh. think his son did it. Oh, interesting. That's a different one. Have you looked into it? No, not a whole lot. But I mean, fuck basically, it. here's the basic tenets of it. So you know how they had DNA evidence, right? Mm-hmm. All of that DNA evidence would have been exactly the same for his son his son was put in a mental institution for rage disorder where he wrote a poem where he says this is the year of the knife where i solve my problems with women with knives um at the time he was um currently um he was a wife beater that uh not only beat but stabbed uh, sorry not a wife beater girlfriend beater i guess or whatever he stabbed one of his girlfriends before 
the hat that was found at the scene that they couldn't figure out what was going on, why it had dog hair on it, was a hat that he had been photographed wearing several times next to his dog. And once you understand all of these cases, here's another funny thing. OJ bought, got his son a lawyer before he got himself a lawyer. And his son was leaving the state at the time that the OJ uh, slow fucking like drive was happening where the police were chasing him. Yeah, his son was leaving the state and putting his vehicle in a fucking storage facility two states over. And then his vehicle was sold at like a private auction later and they never recovered it. Fair enough. I think OJ was just protecting for his son. Like his son fucking stabbed those people. And also, you know, like the time issues were an issue because like the ice cream and stuff because it didn't fit with his alibi. Yeah, that's because his son murdered those people and then OJ showed up like an hour and a half later. It could work. Of course. If I bought my wife a fucking Ferrari and her boyfriend were driving it around town, I might also uh, have some words. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. He, he definitely had motive. <laughs> yeah. I was but I'm just saying all of the evidence fits his son way better than fits him. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't care. Somebody in that family got away with murder. <laughs> right. Um, all right, Caboose, catch you later. Um, yeah, actually I'm going to, you know what? Um, yeah, I'm going to spend a little bit solo here. I'm going to fly a little mm -hmm. solo here, Scott. Peace. Uh, later. Um, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being the, uh, boomer. I appreciate it. Uh, lit. And uh yeah, we'll do a we'll do a little we'll do a little um a little wine down here, a little just chatting, a little stuff uh, adjacent to. Um and I'll pay a little more attention to y'all, give you guys the attention that you so rightly deserve, um, that you crave as parasocial entities. Uh I um, I worry a little bit about giving out that much technical detail to people, but I, I you know, t technology um, is, you know, weaponry. It's like everything else in humanity's uh, existence. Um, what you do with that, it could be potentially <laughs> saving or damning. Um, so when I, when I hand out that kind of like high end security stuff, um, it always gives me cause for concern a little bit in the back of my head but i also do firmly believe that it's well within your right to have that knowledge and that information that human knowledge belongs to the world no matter the potential downside or damage that it can cause so i'm within my ethical framework but i often worry and concern about my um legal culpability <laughs> as it were and especially within you know terms of service within twitch and that sort of thing always freaks me out a little bit um uh, that's probably my Ansin. Um, that's probably my uh, my essay on anarcho syndicalism, some dumb. Um, so there'd probably be exclamation Ansin in chat. Um, but it is it's not an in depth explanation of scope and scale. Um, but it is it does talk about it a little bit. Um, no, Chomsky, nothing. Well, I mean, no, no, it isn't intrinsically. It isn't. Um, it isn't Yogi, but that doesn't stop fucking Twitch from being Twitch and shit like that, right? Um, Puka. um, sin, sin, S I S Y N, as in syndicalism, exclamation and sin. Here, let me let me just. There you go. Um, how do I feel about communalists, Kai? I mean. Um, I mean, I, uh, okay. So in order, whether, um, how do I feel about communalists? Uh, I think it, I think it works. Um, but I think it only works under, uh, under Dunbar's number. Communalism starts to fail once you, most things start to fail once you pass Dunbar's number, but communalism definitely starts to degrade quickly past Dunbar's number. Um, Bodega, um, John, um, I have not flip-flopped on this. 
I changed my mind probably when I was 16-ish, and I haven't changed my mind again. I am a Vermonter by birth. I'm an environmentalist. Um, that hasn't changed. Um, I quite am a fan of this planet. I think it's kind of nice. Um, I think we fuck it up. And with that being said, um, in nuclear power is the stopgap energy production technology that we need to phase out fossil fuels. It's um, necessary. Uh, Silver, no, that's not a basic FAQ link. That's just uh, an essay on anarcho-syndicalism. Um, I couldn't answer that off the top of my head, whether that's that's somebody I would I, I would I would defer to fucking Swede for something like that. No. Um, here, um, as far as nuclear power goes, um, ugh, here you go. Um, there is a link to. Um, There we go. Let me, uh, My name's David. There's a link to um, Professor David uh, Ruzix. Um, he is he is the um, he is a professor of engineering at the Department of Nuclear Plasma and Radiological Engineering at University of Illinois, um, and that is a video dispelling the myths of nuclear power. And so, if you have questions about nuclear power, watch it. Because chances are you're not as qualified as, doc, uh, as Dr. Ruzik is. Um, he will talk about the waste. He will talk about failure. He will talk about radiation. He will address the concerns with nuclear power. Um, the concerns that most people have are myths. They don't exist. Those aren't valid concerns. So, yeah, um, I encourage you. Link is in chat. Watch it. If you've got questions about nuclear power. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is that if you want to phase out fossil fuels, you're going to have to use nuclear power more than likely. Um, please do not refer to me as boy. Um, but congratulations on your maybe real position. Um, they're not even a member of the Discord community, either. So they wouldn't be in this skills exchange. Um, but either way, it, um, yes, it's, it's definitely going to be uh, a necessary stopgap, um, barring some unforeseen next generational technology that apparently isn't, it, it will not be here. Um, so yeah, he'll, he'll cover the basics for you. If you uh, have questions within the leftist community, um, oh yeah, the wolf thing. I don't want to talk about that. This could be a whole other environmental conversation. Um, yeah, yeah, it was surprisingly chud free. Um, Maybe the bait was too obvious. Um, I'm literally turning it into, I put the, um, I put the, uh, um, the stream title here. I just updated it. Safe space slash stay out. We'll see if we can't. We'll see if we can't hook a couple in the last few, uh, last a uh, last little bit. That that probably fucking watch it just flood it. <laughs> like, we're here. Uh, yeah, just roll out the welcome mat. Why don't you? Um. Uh, that uh. Yeah, you know. Not really casting the line out, more uh, more rebating the hook. Um, but yes. Ugh. 
I still fucking that $24 million diamond. God, that still annoys me. Hmm. Um, just your worm. Exactly. Um, yeah, it usually it's, it's weird fucking doing the old IT stuff and doing OPSEC with people and like, um, schooling on that. It's, it uses a different muscle. I gotta tell you when I spun it up, um, last week, um, for purposes, um, and checked out what what all the new um, thanks John um, what the new uh, security uh, technologies look like and what uh, what you know what are the new coins and what are the new um, you know a lot of it's still the same but a lot of it has changed and it felt it felt good it felt nice to explore some of those spaces um, stretch a little bit of the the security um, professional stuff it's a bit of a muscle. Um, so I'm not trying to argue, just wanting to understand the idea is kind of like community co-ops. What, what are you talking about? Some dumb. Are you talking about the Ansin essay? Um, syndicalism is derived from syndicat, meaning um, trade union. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's affinity groups organized around uh, union membership for all intents and purposes, just organized anarchistically. <clears throat> Remember the rule. Um, everything and something is just that something organized anarchistically right so it is syndicalists that operate anarchistically um so basically syndicalists are just affinity groups that operate um within trade union or union unionship member uh, union membership Cool. I'll see if I can. I'll throw it on the list. <laughs> I'll just throw it on the list, Scott. But thank you. Um, yep, it's on the list. It's not over. It some dumb. It's a stop. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, okay, so I don't advocate for a thing directly because uh, the only thing I advocate for is anarchism because one, I don't think most people are ready for what I would roll out, right? That's not going to happen in my lifetime. We're in the business of progress. We're in the business of harm reduction, right? Um, you're not going to convert most businesses to co-ops. It's not going to happen. But you know what you can do? Unionize their membership. And once you have unionized membership, one of unionized employee sets, now you can start talking syndicalism. Once you can start talking syndicalism, now we can start sliding that uh, that further left, right? So that's that's sort of the purpose of the anarcho-syndicalist. Um, Antifa terror. Th thank you for the uh, the the prime sub. Thank you for the Bezos box. Right. Yeah. This it's this is part of the Anson essay is written with the Tsushi and incrementalism in mind. I don't. I'm not a syndicalist, but I will argue for syndicalism because I think syndicalism is a step that in the correct direction that we can achieve. Um, but my end goal is far, far different from that. But as I used to tell people all the time, where I would like to go, you have to change trains at multiple train stations to get there. You can't get there is no direct line from here to there. So there's no point in me arguing for it because it's not going to happen. So I just need to get people headed in the correct direction. Antifa Jew and see how many chuds I can bait that way. Hey, Australia has a union for pretty much every uh, form of job. Yeah, I've I've seen that. That that's you have fairly strong union membership in Australia. It's an interesting fact, especially as an American. I mean, that just looks like you leaned on a keyboard. <laughs> Did 
sure to like the project. But yes, um, since the Ensign essay is literally designed, um, as an introductory, um, essay for people who are unfamiliar with these concepts, um, it, you know, it does those sorts of things that a lot of people have questions about the scope, scale, delegation, federation sort of stuff. So it's addressed in that. Oh, closed shops. Yeah, um, closed shops are illegal in the U.S., um, Yogi. Um, they've been illegal since the Taft-Hartley Act in 47. Um, yeah, we it is illegal to have a closed shop in the U.S. Can't do it. Um, I have that about you having union fees going to possibly buy businesses and co-ops. There's a few different ways um, to handle the the, the turnover, um, but I like um, I like Swede's methodology of A and B stocks and how one is voting stock and one is derivative stock. So you can derive profits from, but you may not have voting membership or you may have voting membership or you may not derive profits from. Um, so you can divide the stock for your, your uh, company, for your corporation up that way so that you can pay back owners um, using derivative stocks, but you may not um, give them voting rights using the voting stock. Um, so there are a couple of interesting methodologies that you can utilize legally, financially, um, to facilitate that, that, uh, transition as well. Later, Puka. What did Raphael say? Hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, you may actually want that the other way around sometime. Um, be surprised. The ones with the profit incentive you don't actually often want running the company. Um, yeah, I think, I think if we look around with a honest review of the capitalist profit incentive, um, putting the ones with the most to gain in charge of the decision-making leads down some pretty dark paths. Yeah. So you may actually want the workers the ones who operate the facility, the ones whose livelihood is reliant upon the continuation of that facility to have the say in how the business operates, how to navigate the ship, and the people who have the profit incentive or need paying back for the transitionary state to be separated from that. Yeah. Um, Eskazon, Eskazon, that either way, sorry, thank you for the follow. It's been a bit of a long stream, either way. Um, checks decided, uh, we have to pay for this thing. Plant this, uh, sting them up, it's good for them and for us. Jesus Christ, fair enough. Uh, looks like the Texas whistleblower website is offline again. <clears throat> yeah, let me check it. 
Yeah, it just redirects to the Texas Right to Life website now. Whoopsie. Can't imagine how that was difficult to keep online. Hey, boss. Um, <laughs> physically a mess, boss. Physically a mess. Uh, last couple of few days, though, I got uh, actually yesterday and today, I've got uh, got some decent content put out. Um, yeah, show wise, content wise, decently. Um, but like physically, just a fucking mess. But hey, there, boss. How are you, Ben? Wait, really? This story comes from Illinois. Javier Esqueda became a whistleblower against his own department by exposing a video that depicted a death in custody to the media. And now he's facing prison time. 37 year old Eric <sighs> Lurie died at a hospital in January of 2020. He's facing 20 years. Holy shit. This cop fucking released a video. He fucking whistle blew and he released a video to the media of a fucking death in custody and now they're fa he's facing down 20 years in prison. <clears throat> that's where your bad apples are. I'm sorry, that's where your good apples are. Uh, fucking people are like, oh, it's only a few bad apples. Well, where are the good apples? The good apples are driven off the fucking police department, uh, driven out of the police department and faced with 20 fucking years. Lurie has swallowed drugs and the officers knew Oh, let's see if I can't find it. Let's see. Um. Alright. This story comes from Illinois. Javier Esqueda became. Okay. There we go. Um, let's see. Unauthorized access to a video in, in interfering with an ongoing investigation, uh, in fucking criminal and uh, criminal activities resulting in internal investigations. They're playing it vague and loose. It looks like. Um, but yeah, uh, they'll probably throw an obstruction of justice in there as well. That's always a good go-to for them. Yeah. Um, no, no, Duffy, it's not. Um, in prison time, 37. So basically, um, Eric Lurie, a black man who died in police custody in Illinois, um, was, uh, fucking. He was handcuffed in the back of a police vehicle <clears throat> and he was chewing on something in his mouth, apparently. Um, and an officer held his nose in an attempt to open his mouth. And the coroner uh, died that he uh, it ruled that he had died of an accidental overdose. Um, but the officer on the video can be seen obstructing his airway and uh, hitting him about the face and mouth area. Um, and then when he stopped being responsive, started hitting him, telling him, wake up, bitch. And he, of course, didn't wake up. 
Um, <clears throat> but in Escueda's opinion, he said he felt that he was suffocating in the video um, and that the, uh, the department attempted to cover it up, up to and including the medical examiner ruling in an accidental overdose, and they tried to bury the footage. So Escueda, being a human being with a conscience, uh, unauthorized accessed the tape um, even though he was not authorized to and released it to the media. They placed him on immediate administrative leave and they are uh, and they are saying that there's probably going to be a criminal investigation and charges brought against him. Hey Anton. Um, uh, you can't put their, uh, you cannot put a hand on their nose. You cannot obstruct their breathing. You cannot obstruct their airway. There is a literal law in Illinois that says you can't do that to get them to cough up anything in their mouth. Um, in an attempt to get drugs that they may be holding in their mouth. You cannot do that. There is literal law on the books. Um, and, um, yeah. So... Yeah. Um, and yeah, in his opinion, he quote said, a hundred percent believes that there was an attempt to cover up Lurie's death. Um, they did not attempt CPR. They did not attempt resuscitation technique, uh, methodologies of any kind. Um, and he is now facing down criminal charges of a litany of sorts because he was a whistleblower. Um, it's not the, I mean, this is far from the first time fucking, um, Adrian Schoolcraft, uh, when dealing with the NYPD because he, uh, he reported, uh, corruption with widespread corruption within the NYPD. They fucking threw him in a psych ward. Um, yeah, like police departments have been known to take extreme measures to cover their ass. I mean, is anybody fucking like they made a movie about this shit? Serpico? That that's that that happened. Like if anybody fucking goes back and watches the old fucking uh, the old movie uh, Serpico, Frank Serpico is a real dude. That really fucking happened. Right? They will go to extreme measures to cover their asses. This is just an, you know, another example. Oh, look, that's a great fucking headline. Uh, S-E-R-P-I-C-O, Serpico. Yeah, how many gangs in the L.A. Sheriff's Department alone again? Yeah, I know, right? Uh, assault on Precinct 13? I mean, that, that one I don't think was factual, but God knows. Um... An NYPD a, a lieutenant has been arrested, like, yesterday? Yesterday. Um, hey, Squee. Uh, NYPD a, a lieutenant was arrested yesterday for beating his girlfriend and ripping out her fucking, uh, her hair, um, because she, uh, talked to other men at a party. Straight up. He, um, caught punching, uh, punching her and wh ripping out her hair, uh, right on, like, right on the street side, um, according to the criminal complaint. Bleeding, bruising, these sorts of things. Uh, he attended a party <laughs> um, with this woman, and she spoke to other men. And so he, he snapped and fucking lost it. And so he, yeah, he, he beat the shit out of her. Uh, something, something, 40% of cops. I knew, right? Um... Ethan Hawk, isn't it? Fair enough. Um, yeah. Nineteen seventy-three, Al Pacino. I was one. Um, yeah, it's 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 not a new movie, but it's it's. Look up Frank Serpico. 
that shit happened. It, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, get to the summary. Um. <clears throat> On September 11th, 1959, Serpico joined the New York City Police, uh, Police Department as a probationary patrolman and became a full patrolman on uh, March 5th, 1960, assigned to the 81st pre Precinct. He then worked with the, for the Bureau of Criminal Identification for two years, assigned to plainclothes undercover work in which he eventually exposed widespread corruption. Serpico was a plainclothes police officer working in Brooklyn, the Bronx, and Manhattan to expose vice racketeering. In 67, he reported credible, uh, credible, uh, credible evidence of widespread systemic police corruption and, not, and saw no effect until he met another police officer, David Dirk, who helped him. Serpico believed his partners knew about his secret meetings with police investigators, finally contributing to a 19... <laughs> Uh, to an April 25th, 1970 front page story in the New York Times on widespread corruption in the NYPD, which drew national attention to the problem. Uh, Mayor Lindsay appointed a five-member panel to investigate uh, accusations of police corruption. The panel get, became known as the Knapp Commission, named after its chairman, Whitman Knapp. Um, pub shooting in public interest. Serpico was shot during a drug arrest attempt on February 3rd, 1971 at Driggs Avenue in Brooklyn. Four officers from the Brooklyn North Police Command had received a tip that a drug deal was about to take place. Two policemen, Gary Rotman and Arthur Cesar, stayed outside while the third, Paul Haley, stood in front of the apartment building. Serpico climbed up the fire escape, entered by the uh, fire escape door, went downstairs, listened for the password, and followed two suspects outside. The police arrested the young suspects, found two, one, uh, one of them had two bags of heroin, when Haley stayed with the suspects, Roteman told Serpico, who so, uh, spoke Spanish, to make a fake purchase attempt to get the drug dealers out in the open. The police went to the third door landing. Serpico knocked on the door, keeping his hand on his revolver. The door opened a few inches just far enough to wedge his body in. Serpico fought for help, but his fellow officers ignored him. Serpico was then shot in the face by the suspect with a 22 long rifle pistol. Bullet struck just below the eye, lodging in top above his jaw. He would fired back, striking his assailant, fell to the floor, and began to bleed profusely. <clears throat> his police colleagues refused to make a 1013 dispatch to police headquarters, indicating that an officer had been shot. An elderly man who lived in the next apartment called the Emergency Services reported that a man had been shot and stayed with Serpico. When a police car arrived, aware that Serpico was a fellow officer, they then transported him in the patrol car to Greenpoint Hospital. Se uh, severed an auditory nerve, leaving him deaf in one ear. He suffered chronic pain from bullet fragments lodged in his brain. Um, yes. Um, yeah. It, it, this is, you know... That's just part of what Serpico experienced. It, it, that's, yeah. Fuck him. Let him die, right? Mossy. Um. Yeah, that's that's standard policy. There's a list out there of cops that have been driven out um, because they dared go against the the the, the fraternal order. Um, one cop had to move out of country because of the death threats they and their family kept receiving. Um, I know another cop from like mid country ended up moving like half, like to California or Texas or something like that to escape the the threats to their family. Um, yeah, like that's. You, it's like, oh, it's just a few bad apples. No, it's a shit ton of bad apples and, like, a couple of good apples that they eventually drive out because, yeah, it's, it's fucking terrifying to be a whistleblower cop. Uh, you leave, Yogi. You leave. You straight up leave the country. Yeah. How do you escape a national mafia like the police force? You fucking leave. I'm guessing the FOP is one union you don't support. Um, they're not a. They're, they shouldn't be a union in the first place. 
um, yeah, like if you're going to organize this system the way it's organized, um, public sector employees like that probably shouldn't be um, shouldn't be unionized. Yeah, especially ones that have a monopoly of force over their communities. I mean, I could I could see like um, air traffic controllers. Um, Senate staffers and interns and like administrators and shit like that. They're okay. That's fine. But when you're literally directly in control of a monopolization of force at the behest of the state who maintains a monopolization of force um, and your role is to maintain the status quo of the system by violent means, you, you shouldn't have that. You shouldn't have collective uh, bargaining power. That's not a thing you should have. You're you're literally empowered. You're empaneled to use violence and force to ensure the, the uh, to ensure the status quo of the system. Your status quo should become a dictate from the people. Yeah, they should not have uh, collective bargaining powers. Hey, Wanks. But. I'm gonna dump out. I'm gonna fucking dump out to like M3 or something like that. Um, Jesus Christ. Come on. Get it over 40. Whatever. Um, either way, I've been talking too long. Um, use your newfound knowledge if we were here for it. Either way, I'll catch y'all later. I gotta go get some food. And stop and just shut the fuck up.